Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the uh, September 27th session for the Finance and Planning Committee to order. Uh, one little disclaimer statement. Uh, official recordings, videos, or transcriptions of the HSV Property Owners Association committee meetings and or board meetings will be done by authorized personnel only and can be viewed on the HSV Property Owner Association YouTube channel at explorethevillage.com. Any other recording, video, or transcription of the committee meeting and or board meeting is not considered the official record of the Property Owners Association. So with that, uh, next item on the agenda was review and approval of last week's minutes. I saw a couple of minor comments come back uh, this morning to Kathy's uh, Minutes. Other than that, I didn't see anything significant. So I guess since Kathy's not here, I uh, probably need a volunteer to be the minute taker for this meeting. Tom, thank you, sir. Much appreciated. And uh, unless there's any other comments, I guess I would move that we accept the minutes as amended by the email traffic this morning. Basically, it said my evil twin was here in my place, and uh, there was a small error in the number of rounds of golf. So mm -hmm. once those are adjusted, we'll so I motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes as amended by the comments already provided. Thanks, sir. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. So next, next up on the agenda, I think it was innovation, public safety, food and beverage, and recreation. Whatever order you wanna, you wanna do them in. One quick <coughs> admin thing, just for us: Are there more coming, or is this the last of the budget items? Admin is the last to come, and that includes admin, HR, and IT. Okay, and that's the only one that we haven't Perfect. seen yet. Perfect. So I guess we'll probably look at that one on Wednesday. And we may be able, we, we had a meeting on Wednesday and we have another meeting scheduled for the 4th of October, the following Monday. Uh, if we have a small agenda on Wednesday, we may be able to kill two birds with one stone there because the real purpose for that October 4th meeting was to figure out what the finance and planning committee inputs were going to be to the board on the 22 budget. So maybe we can do both of those and give ourselves a day off. So, Karina, over to you. Uh, Whatever um, batting order you want to take them in. Well, I'm going to let recreation go first. I've got Terry Wiley here, who's over the recreation department, mm -hmm. and we'll work through his, and then I will speak to all the rest of them. Okay. So. Here's the overall summary. I'm going to go ahead and jump into R100, which is the admin sign. Just a quick, quick question. In um, the headcount for 22, or, or say 21, there's 73, 73 in theory, not much of a change. Mm -hmm. But what did you actually end up with, just for kind of reference perspective? How many employees today? How many employees do we have today? Yeah, just, I mean, is it 73? Is it like 65 it just helps with some wage comparison yes probably um how many vacant positions do you know you're running in rec right now well, a lot of those are seasonal employees mm -hmm. which actually are going to be leaving us within the next two weeks because we're going into the winter mm -hmm. but as far as full-time openings i think we have two open okay. right now okay. Okay. but most of those part-time jobs they're they're those folks who you know work the fitness center, front desk, and mm -hmm. pick a ball. Well, and you see there's a, per, a drop in the percent change from budget over budget, but it, these two that have gone from full-time and dropped two headcount there and added two part-time, all the insurance benefits stuff would then be taken out, which is why you have the overall decrease. Okay. Okay. So, all right, so for REC admin... I'm sorry, can you get back to that for just a second? Apologies. Uh, the amount decreasing makes sense, but a 13%. Well, 
Well, compensation one of the, reduction from changing two people out of 70. Well, the other part of it is last year when we budgeted all of our part-time people, we calculated them at 1,080 hours. Ah, uh, that's right. So this is with the reduction of that. Um, okay. The ones that are part-time but will be more than that, we went ahead and we went in this morning, we adjusted them back to the 1080, okay. but the rest we've left lower because their actual will okay. be lower. So it's the same number of heads, but they weren't working the number of hours that were originally budget that Correct. were legacy budget. Correct. Thank you. Okay. So, probably a follow up question to that. Uh, for part timers, you have 51. Do you have like an estimate for the full time equivalent? I mean, how many hours were you budgeting for? This is the most of them are at the 546 hours. So it's about four to equate to one full time. Quarter time. Okay. Okay. So you got about 13 full-time equivalent heads. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sorry. Okay. All right, so jump into the admin side of it. Uh, you can see the revenue has gone on up a little bit, which is all donation revenue. That's all that gets counted there. Uh, here, oops, sorry. Your payroll, come down. Um, some of the copier supplies has gone up a little bit, and that's because they've moved some of the equipment around. The other big piece here is the special programs and events, mm -hmm. and that is the firework show for the most part, along with some of the other stuff that they have that goes on that put, gets put in there. And our firework show went up. How much was it this year? They said they expect 15 to 20 percent increase. Yeah. So it's, it's not surprising. I think a $19,000 show. Yeah. I'd imagine your shipping costs have gone sky high on all that stuff. So. Well, they come in and do it, and they typically have done what a three-year contract with us. Mm -hmm. right. And with the way the market's been, we're just doing a <laughs> one sure. show at a time right now. They don't yep. want any part of the three-year. They don't want to lock in at a price yeah. right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, and I have to say that's a heck of a fireworks for, show for that investment, too. That's... Yeah. So any donations to the fireworks fund, you know, help. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it goes. Is the uh, 20000 you're projecting for this year, um, is it just because it's the formula that's in there? Yes. And the cost was really only about eleven. Um, I think we've still got one other invoice for the fireworks show to clear out of there. Um, it's... And then so it'll come up closer to that, but yes. Okay. okay. So I just had a question about the staffing up above. It looked like you might have lost a staffer in the admin department for part of the year because it looks like your your actuals are pretty low, but your budget run, run, is running to trend. Yes. So there is a high-level position um, that has been moved. No. I apologize. That's CD. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we went without an administrative assistant for the majority of the year, and we had someone put in place three months ago. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, too many numbers running around my head. Uh, there's no capital for this department, so everything else is pretty cut and dry. Any questions on admin? My only question is just more of a... Uh, on one of your lines in there for building maintenance says admin does not have a building, but then there's building maintenance cost. So yes, they do have a, um, some of it is allocated based upon our admin building. So they still have offices and stuff in there. So that's where it comes into play. This is if they wanted to paint their office or something like some needed the flooring replaced, something like that. That's where it get allocated to them. Okay. If it was a minor. Um, they've got some of their other buildings too that uh, would you'll see in, in the other departments that would have that cost. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, that so. probably would not be twelve hundred. I still have well, that's why I'm trying to understand. You got twelve hundred in there previous years versus zero, and then I understand other buildings, but in mm -hmm. the admin, if there's no planned activity for admin, then why do we have that in there? Mm -hmm. Well, and that's where I was just fixing to say I still have some of those smaller accounts I need to go through and okay. do some of the cleanup right. on. Okay. Okay. But I've tried to get all the big stuff <clears throat> taken care of yep. already. Okay. Yep, yep. So those allocation accounts were still clean enough. Got it. All right, so grounds maintenance. Um, 
compares their payroll comparatively. So that's gone down, and I think that's been just a process of how many hours we've calculated for our part time and so forth in that as well. The maintenance of wrecks, that, that's a big jump that you didn't see for the last couple of years. You can see the comment there. Um, the building supplies, the clay, the sand, and all that stuff that was unbudgeted in 2021. So, This is in the contracts line. Is they're needing some extra people for the grounds maintenance crew, and so what we were looking at, or what Terry was looking at, is we're opting to add a contract um, to get those services done rather than taking on two more employees because it would be cheaper to go this route than adding the headcount with the benefits and everything else. Okay. So instead yeah. of adding staff, we've added a contract. And what's, what's the purpose of the contract? I'll let him speak to it's, it a little bit more. It's basically our our, our rec our grounds crew does a whole lot of work outside of the regular parks and recreation amenities so we're trying to so we can just like take really excellent care of our amenities and facilities contract out things like the gates the west gate the east gate uh, parks and uh, they they mow Colella. i mean they, they mow all kind of areas that just aren't really parks and rec so the group that uh, does the landscaping for diamante is the one that put the bid in so it's basically like making the gates look good, mm -hmm. the ambulance uh, areas, the police department, all of those kind of places that Parks and Rec takes care of that's not Parks and Rec. So grounds maintenance used to be under recreation, and then a year and a year ago, two years ago, it was switched under Public Works. Um, it has since gone back as of last year under recreation because 90% of what they do is the maintenance around the recreation buildings however there is still the rest of the stuff that they do for the rest of the community or the rest of the organization so that's where he's saying that they need a little bit extra help because you've got people out there blowing the courts off the tennis courts off a couple of times a day a bunch of different things and so they're just having a lot of trouble keeping up with the total amount of tasks and i can bring you a list of the things that this contract proposes for the company to do if that would help you Okay, so it's gonna, pretty detailed on yeah. what those specs are. So probably not for you, but for Karina and Gary, the broader group. All right. So um, just for as we as we kind of think our way through this. All right. So common property took over mowing of a lot of areas, mm -hmm. right? So we moved that out of streets over to common property. So they're mowing. That's that's one mm -hmm. contract. Um, I'm sure there are other facilities that aren't getting serviced or doing it a different way. Has there been a Hot Springs Village look at all of our different facilities to see whether or not that's covered in that contract or not? And rationale why? From my understanding, if, if you don't mind, the, the mowing that, that Todd's doing is more of the big, the mm -hmm. brush hog kind of things like that, where this, this contract is like detailed landscaping and things of that nature. Going and replacing the mulch and, and stuff like that. Would that include? I mean, the shrubs, that kind okay, of stuff so, that forestry does not do. Okay, I understand now. So if it's more of the landscaping, keeping the flower beds up, the memorial out here, <coughs> that, the, all that kind of stuff, right? It, exactly. Well, it wouldn't be for this place because our, our Parks and Recreation team would take care of this because this is a Parks and Recreation facility. Like I say again, like the front gates, there's a lot of areas that we just take care of. and I. I can get you the detailed list for it, for sure. So the area around the Coronado Center and the Fitness Center, who maintains that? That's our Parks and Recreation team. And basically right now we have seven people on staff and we work, it's a seven day a week gig that they do. And we're, we're at the point where we're stretched out where we really try to take care of many the day before events. Where the goal from this is they're just taking care of Christine all the time. That's that's our hope. Did you say you only received one bid? Well, we went out to get I think three different contractors. We only had one was able to handle the, the amount of work that it is, and that was again the guy who does the amount. I can't remember his name offhand, but 
Which and we haven't got to reviewing the contract or anything yet either. No, it's just the proposal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the two people that you mentioned that could be eliminated, are they in the budget right now? No, we did no. not okay. add two people because we put the contract in. Okay. If we added two people, we we're looking at probably $20,000 more than what this one. So it's, so it's cheaper to contract it out than it is to hire full-time staff. Okay. That I can understand. Yeah. The question, I guess, to even broaden that question, would that also include, like, uh, the golf course clubhouses and all that kind of stuff, too? No. The golf course is take care of that stuff on their own. This is more they of... They have the same problem as you do, so that's why I was asking that question. Mm -hmm. They can barely mow the fairways, not do the clubhouses. Yeah. Same problem you have. Right. Mm -hmm. So they have yeah. not asked that's why I'm thinking holistically else. what yeah. other areas are not being covered for the same manpower issues that you're addressing through the contract. Do we think more broadly to see if there's other things that we should be doing um, so the people that are doing stuff mm -hmm. can focus on yeah. right. that? It, it, it does feel a little bit like there's a lot of similar work being done by different groups mm -hmm. at different locations and what would be potentially interesting would be to run that same exercise with a couple of these other areas because you guys run the exercise and determine it's cheaper to hire a contractor to do the work than it is to bring on staff if you did that in the golf department for example around the clubhouses and all that maybe that Maybe that's a cost reduction for golf. Maybe it's a cost reduction for some of the other groups as well. We're probably a little late in the process. Yeah, too late now. Budget process now, but, it's, but it might be a thought exercise going into next year. Probably at. worth looking at and discussing with the other departments to see if anybody else has the same problem before you go too much further in this contract. Yeah, because Tom that. hasn't complained about them not being able to get to and accomplish any of this stuff mm -hmm. like the rec department has. But Tom also has so many different part-time positions, and so I would, and I'm assuming, okay, so don't. Mm -hmm. Not happening. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's not happening. Oh, okay. So just go take a, go drive to any one of the <laughs> see what, what the, around the clubhouse looks like and the landscaping around I the gotcha. clubhouse. None of it's been taken care of in the last year or two. I thought you were shaking your head not to make an assumption. No. no. <laughs> don't, don't, I would say we have to look at it. Gotcha. But like I said, he hasn't said anything about it yeah. being an issue. I understand if you're saying it is. Um, but it may be that he's got part-time people that should be well, that's maybe doing it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so if you're looking at a full-time position versus part-time people, you do have that cost yep. variable there. But True point. definitely something to look into It's a good point. True point. Um, this is along the same topics. If and when we get to the fire department, they have a request for two mowers that sounds like do exactly what you folks are talking about. Mm -hmm. When we get to it, we can talk about it, but it's same topic. So. Yes, it is. Um, all right, so for grounds rec for capital, there's $25,000 in there for the reoccurring trail renovation on top of the routine maintenance. Um, their note over here. This includes $5,000 for new trails and subdivision. The four-year plan to repair eight miles per year. It was in the 22 O&M is high. Let's see. The new trails? Well, I believe... It's not new trails, it's just renovating the trails that yeah. we have, trying to get them more up to date and safe. We have a lot of areas that propose a safety hazard. Well, you've got includes 5,000 for new trail and yeah. subdivision. That's fine. Well, that's that, that trip, that's like a foot trail for that place that's uh, the, uh, the resort that's being built down the street on the east side. Part of that is just to propose to put that in. But the typical plan was $20,000, and then we added that 5,000 for that foot trail. I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> so, so is the no new. If if they want it, if they want the bottom line on that one is probably if they want that trail, then they need to contribute the five thousand dollars so you can go put the trail in. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, that's the law. We'll adjust that's this back down to the, to the maintenance of the trails at the twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah, and the trails committee had some concern about that as well. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I think the real challenge, we're not trying to be jerks here, but the real, the real challenge that we're working with here is until we get ourselves in a financial position to be able to maintain what we have, it's really, really, really hard to look, to look at the next item and the item after that. So, I mean, if it's, a, if it's something that this new resort mm -hmm. thinks is going to be a nice feature to add to their capability, then they shouldn't have a problem with what they're probably spending down there. You know, five grand's a rounding error for them. So if they really want a trail, they contribute the money and you go build them a trail. No, we just missed removing this piece. We're on the same page. Uh, your DeSoto Park landscaping renovation, uh, deteriorated benches, unsafe landscape timbers replaced with stone for safety issues. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the dump trucks to be replaced for them. It was deferred from the 2022, or the 2020. It's in there as high for 2022. And then replacing a Silverado truck, and then also adding a, a mower for them. The one that they have right now, they use constantly. I believe it's about six years old, and it's in pretty bad shape, and they're, they're wanting to get it replaced. Any other questions on grounds? Not really a question, but more of an observation, and maybe, maybe, maybe not legit. Uh, I know last week when Tom was here, I talked about quite a bit of golf equipment and kind of pooling the buy on the golf equipment, which mm -hmm. was good stuff. If we've got other, you know, moors or we'll pull it pretty popular the item around here, so if we can pool, Absolutely. pool all of that together and get best value for that, that would that would be recommended. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so outdoor wet. And, and okay. just, uh, I don't mean to dig on this, but it's part of the whole, uh, make sure we're all thinking about these the same way, but that was a medium priority that's been moved up to high. We all recognize that those are gonna happen. Um, so kind of what's the justification for that? Is it just that it's older? They didn't realize what shape it was in when they built the O&M table and they've gone, um, I believe it was last week and said it's pretty much on its last leg, we're gonna have to do something soon. Like I said, it's one that they use every single day. So it does have a lot of wear and tear on it already. Um, it was not originally in here. I've added some of the capital items back in that they were either missing or we still had a little bit of wiggle room, and I'm trying to get in as much as what we found necessary. That's one that they had just said, hey, we really need to do something now. We can't push it off okay. for five more years like it was in the O&M. Okay. Gotcha. That should be the only thing that was added back by me that has does not have a high category. So outdoor rec, um, let's see, the revenue over here, they've taken the, I'm a brain fart, what did you, the outdoor rec bundle and allocated it out into all the various departments that it would belong to as we go through these. Um, the budget is a little bit less than what it was for 2021. They're trying to stay in more lines with the actual of what's, what's really going on. Uh, Terry went through and he took all of the sales from August to August and all the transactions under each, each type and that's how he's come up with all of his income figures based upon the number of units sold and so forth. Uh, so that's basically a, that $10,000 decrease is a more accurate reflection of what we think. Okay. Which, and, and he, like I said, he ran it from August to August, so you're kind of picking up where things picked up a little bit, but then they've kind of slowed back down with COVID and, and so forth. So, I mean, I agreed with him. I thought it was a, a decent blend of, of scenarios to pick up. Um, let's see. And are you, the wages have gone down for outdoor rec. Well, we've gone this From year. Budget. We've gone at, at, 
a large portion of the year short of staff person. So. Okay. But we budgeted more, and is that because of that? Those were our part time people as well for outdoor rec. Yeah, and we're we have the an outdoor recreation supervisor position that's about to be posted. It's actually open right now. Gotcha. I'm just saying from us going from 137 down to 98 budget to budget. But if we've got half of your staff or most of your staff in that department is part time, yes. it's my hours calculation is the reason behind that. Does oh, that make okay. sense? Okay, got it, got it, got it. Well, you're not showing much in the way of part time wages. It's almost all full time. Yeah. A lot of our part time is. Uh, it's the seasonal that gets categorized under <coughs> like the pickleball people. It's outdoor recreation, but there's a cost center for pickleball. Mm -hmm. There's the marina is outdoor recreation, but there's a specific cost center for that. What we have in outdoor recreation is a full-time, two full-time positions and one uh, part-time permanent. Well, then we need to go back and look so at this. There's no there's number something there, I'm so that's why that's yep. not adding up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you've got part if you've got part time people there, it looks like maybe their wages didn't get carried into the table, right? Which explains the delta. Yeah. Okay. I wrote it down to go back and look. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, sorry guys. Too many pieces. All right, so there's an increase in your non-cap. Um, they've got over there for some picnic table replacements and memorial bench is, uh, donations are to cover the benches. Um, let's see. Everything else. Looks like it's pretty not too far off. And then your capital down here the picnic table replacement. So do you have that in both spots, Terry? I have an outdoor rack. I mean, in capital and expense. No, it's in capital is like a three-year plan to replace everything. What's in the regular line item is two or three tables. It's not getting 10 to 15 so we can go to each park. It's basically this one is unsafe. We'll replace it in the regular budget. The capital is, let's get rid of all the wooden ones and get the aluminum or a... I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, trail bench repair, three-year program. The Cortez Pavilion, roof for 15000 um, They've got, but it was cut from the 2020 in extremely bad shape. And high on the 2022 O&M. So that's the buildings department taking care of a roof for correct outdoor rec correct okay. yeah it's a little little tough to chase the buildings well, and fleet allocations because they get allocated into the into the current year for, for the execution so it's a little well it will also be something to think about different topic but the prioritization budget if we say hey we need extra amount of money for fleet and extra amount of money for building but then it's spent in all these other departments mm -hmm tracking the bouncing ball and keeping that clear to not only us but the property owners mm -hmm. is going to require some kind of references or some kind of reference code yeah. or some kind of way to track every one of those That's items otherwise there's no way to roll it up yeah on a monthly report to say we actually spent this much more in buildings for roofs and stuff like that across the entire organization because yeah. that's what we're going to need to say Get it's hard it's absolutely. hard for us to follow it let alone that the average villager isn't going to follow that bouncing ball group. no so that's what i'm saying we have to be able to roll it up in a different way so it's something that i think without referencing or something we're going to have a hard time they easily miss stuff well the way that we're capitalizing everything now each thing is in, in its own individual project so even if you have a built, if you have a piece of equipment bought in rec and you have a piece of equipment bought over in admin, you're going to see each of those listed specifically in the capital. So we're still going to be able to track them that way. It's the fact of you guys trying to tie in, creating the seven-year O&M table 
which was converted from the way it used to be. It used to only be, from my understanding, a three-year plan that covered capital. It did not cover your every mm -hmm. expense and mm -hmm. revenue source. So mm -hmm. that that's been a change. And then to mold them together. The, the budget that they fill out in order to get into all of this, it has two columns. It has who's in charge of it, and they filter by that, and they know everything that they have, no matter who it belongs to. Mm -hmm. It all is identified with PW70 or PW60 or A150. And then the respective department that's getting it. So they still have a working list. So we'll still be able to get you your stuff. We're just going to have to come up with some ways that make it less confusing to, for everybody else to understand. I think it sounds like you can... It sounds like you can do the accounting. I think my only concern with that would be hopefully it's a relatively low overhead thing to do to, to be able to pull all that together. Well, but but you did you did raise an, an interesting question, and I was going to ask it last week, and I forgot. Um, if we're doing a pooled buy, you know, Moore's is good an example as any. Who actually has the dot to go pull all of those various items together and put together the the request for bid and evaluate the bid and all of that sort of thing if you've got two or three departments that that equipment's going to be allocated out around? Well, the department that is in charge of it is the one that would be doing that, okay. that legwork. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get into the cross between golf, mm -hmm. so if you're looking at vehicles, or not vehicles, but... Uh, some of the heavy because he's got a mower golf has mowers right so when you start dealing with golf it's going to have to be that well number one we got to stop working in silos okay yeah. that that's the biggest piece of this puzzle <laughs> yeah that's kind of, it, that's kind of where that question is going <laughs> is, is, we're not working in silos we're working in unison we're working yeah. together and we're communicating mm -hmm. so what it's going to end up requiring is you have the golf department and you have the fleet department getting together and taking their list, which they both have access to the same list, mm -hmm. and, and working through it together. Okay. Now, if, it's, if, if it was all just, say, vehicles, and golf is not in charge of their vehicles, mm -hmm. but you're getting one for rec and one for streets and one for this, it would all be held by, handled by fleet. Okay. That's why I said they're still the originating departments. Mm -hmm. And in the past, fleet had everything in their budget. So if you had 15 new vehicles and 30 new mowers and all that, it was all in fleet. Anything building maintenance, it was all in buildings. Same thing with IT. But the problem that we were running into is the example like I always gave, which I know it sounds petty, but it's a very real example. If I wanted my office painted, I'd call building maintenance, they'd eat it, and I'd get an office and no cost to me. So then their costs skyrocket because of what every other department's wanting. And you're not getting a true picture of what that department is truly costing you. So, if we're having people that are going out and tearing up equipment all the time, instead of fleet having to bite the bullet and, and explain why streets tore up a backhoe or why lakes tore up, you know, something else, it, it, it's obvious. And they have to do the justification. They did it, it's part of their stuff. And that's how much that department is running us to cost. So there's been a lot of changes in the way we're trying to track things. Mm -hmm. There's just a few other things to kind of keep working out. But it, I understand all that. I think what Larry's getting to is, okay, so we just talked about mowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which department is going to lead the consolidated mower They'd have bill? to do it in Cause, conjunction. Because he wants a mower too. Mm -hmm. And how does golf know he wants a mower? And make sure golf that wouldn't. That's exactly. what I said. That's the fleet, point we're trying to make. Fleet <clears throat> buys all the mowers for everybody else. So it would be fleet and golf in conjunction. They have to work hand in hand to, okay. to pull all that together. Okay. No, the, fleet in, would handle it on Rick's behalf. Okay. Okay. In the in the past, we used to, we used to buy everything together mm -hmm. in the old days. Mm -hmm. We'd buy recreation, buy mowers, mm -hmm. golf mowers, the whole thing. Uh, most of the mowers and that equipment, uh, the golf bought the most of it. Mm -hmm. So we'd go to recreation and then it all would go to golf. Golf would drive the train on, on all that. Mm -hmm. Now with heavy equipment and fleet and, and uh, cars and trucks, that would go to fleet. 
But as far as the mowers and that sort of thing, golf, to your question, would drive the train on that. Because they're the most familiar with the, the yeah. equipment and, and things. But that's the way it used to work, and we can certainly do that again. I, I, who, who does it, I think, is kind of, you know, staff choice. But the real question is, as long as everybody knows that somebody's got the dot to go pull together the various pieces and parts and you make a single acquisition for it to get best value, that's all we're really looking for. Yeah. Is this thing on? All right, so the next item is the Cortez Pavilion parking, reseal and striping. Uh, that was actually taken out. Yeah, this is zero. Yeah, so I apologize. Uh, the Balboa Pavilion paint and refurbish. And it doesn't have any notes in there, but it was high on the oh no. The DeSoto Beach parking repair, trail signage, and repair Balboa Spillway Trail Bridge. Okay. Any other questions regarding outdoor rec? We did say that we could take out that DeSoto Beach. Oh yeah, and I hadn't, 20. I hadn't fixed it yet. I have that on my other page. So this one is actually gonna come off. Okay. Correct, this one? And then this one is actually, you said this one needs to go up five, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What, what just, which uh, Balboa Pavilion is coming off? Or? The paint and refurbish, they're gonna try to do that in-house. The DeSoto. DeSoto. DeSoto yeah, Beach Park and Repair. Okay. <clears throat> They're going to try to do that striping in house and stuff. Okay. Um, so you're going to take 20k off of there and add 5k to the the paint and refurbish yes. is what I think I heard. Okay. And I'll make those changes and, and they'll be out later. Okay. Okay. All right. So your dog park is pretty straightforward. Uh, They're running seventy five hundred dollars in expenses utilities, some operating supplies. Cool. The RV park is also pretty straightforward. Uh, I had a question about the RV park. It has nothing to do with the budget, but how, I know it's not a big park, but it looks like it gets pretty good occupancy. How's the occupancy rate in the RV park? It's outstanding. Once we did that renovation where we doubled the size of it, mm -hmm. between doubling the size of it and then when COVID hit, it just blew up. I mean, everybody started <laughs> doing the recreation vehicle thing, so mm -hmm. it's been mm -hmm. outstanding. It's one of our busiest, <laughs> busiest things that we have. We're actually doing a photo shoot out there October 5th to kind of market and advertise it more. Cool. And I so. believe it makes up 40 or 60 percent of our discovery package. Yeah. Play which is a nice cost reduction for the POA as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, reason, the reason I brought it up is not, not that we can do anything with it in the next couple of years till we get the budget back into balance, but that looks like a potential opportunity if there's space available for a small future expansion out there. And that's one thing we've kind of brought up, um, even I'm looking at the idea there? of... <laughs> of if we would be able to you know, even at some point down the road, provide a few of the RVs. So it's not just for the people who would have to bring their own in, but you could rent one there as well. But I think, like I said, that's way down the road. Um, the utility side would need to be put in place as far as the dumping station, all that kind of yeah. stuff. But I believe there is a master plan uh, with further renovations that, that we already have that was done, you know, how to do it in stages. Good to, good to know. A couple of years, maybe we can come back to that one. Uh, they don't have any capital. Uh, so, any questions here? Pickleball. They've gone up a little bit on their revenue. Um, wages are, are down a little bit. And that's the part time, so that would be due to that calculation change. Mm -hmm. Expenses are pretty straightforward, not much changing there, and no capital. Mm -hmm. um, 
we will put in version two, uh, they've asked that we put in the parking lot repair expansion in version two of the budget, but it is not in this one. Okay. How long is the court surface slated to last? Well, it comes with, a, I believe it's a three year warranty, but I think it's gonna last a lot longer than that. Mm -hmm. And it's, we were actually there today, they're finishing up and it looks really good. And, mm -hmm. and we, have a, we have some knowledgeable people uh, that live here and they're part of the organizations of no concrete, no paint, actually do the business and they're all really pleased with the way it looks and, and the, the job. So we feel really good about it lasting. It's concrete, it last forever. The surface on top of it, yeah. right? Wires, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like roads and all of that kind of thing. Depends on what's under it. A lot of times, more than more than the way, well, partially the way it's constructed, partially what the underlayment is. Yeah. Okay. More curiosity question than anything. Again, not a budget question. More a curiosity question. I have a question about revenues. Uh, you look at the twenty-two budget, seventy-four thousand. Uh, you look at the prior couple of years, and it's. Fifty-five to sixty thousand, so pretty strong increase. You feel good about that? I do. We we literally ran the numbers from August to August, and a lot of that has to do with that that bundle mm -hmm. and the allocation that's provided, or or that was not existing at one time. Mm -hmm. That's uh, part of that increase. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. We okay to move on to tennis. Mm -hmm. Good. <clears throat> So revenue has budgeted to go up here. Um, Just a little. Most of it is in the annual tennis membership, and I think that's due to that bundle as well. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, your wages have dropped a little bit. A lot of that's due to your part time. Your wages went full time went up a little bit. There's not really any huge variances here. Um, they've got $8,000 in the maintenance of rec for some windscreen repairs, fence maintenance, and so forth, so that's a little higher. Um, you can see in 2020 it was higher yet yeah. for actual. So. Um, and I, let's see, their capital, they have got the hard court repair patching. Oh, so I did put it in twice. That's what you have for this hardcore tennis court, right? Or yes, is that something that's else? That's the one that we needed to add the 5,000 to. That's the one that should be 35, not the Balboa Pavilion. Okay, so I put this in here over the weekend, but that's not actually applicable. You picked it up here. The hard, sorry, you don't even see what I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm sorry. The hardcore repairs patching. Is that the tennis court? That is a tennis court. Okay. And that's the one that's the 35,000 was our bid. Okay, so ignore court. that number. So it, so, sounds, so it sounds like the very bottom one. Yeah, it sounds like it's also duplicated. I had a duplicate the other the tab. I went through the seven year O and M over the weekend and yeah. tried to find everything that was high mm -hmm. that was missed and added in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I picked it up on there. Okay. Um, replacement of unsafe timber with stone mm -hmm. for safety issue. <coughs> the Cronada Tennis Center Pavilion re roof, and that's what we have in. All of it for tennis. Um, those were also on the O M. Any questions regarding tennis? I have a question, not regarding tennis itself. It comes up all over the place. ADP Gallagher employees. <laughs> yes, is... that's allocating our payroll expense for running ADP. Okay. So that's typically been in HR, and we're allocating the base one headcount. Okay. So I mean, it appears all over. Yeah. Okay. Allocation. Yeah. And then just one other one, just because it also is, seems to be interesting in all of the budgets is the telephone line. And it says you're researching it. What what's going on there? Because it seems like they're all they're working, way higher than they were before. Well, they are really high. <laughs> um, that's been due to a version conversion over with the fiber internet, which costs us out the wazoo. Um, we are. That is a big part of our expense that they implemented two years ago. Um, they've had some other conversions as far as, that was the SD-WAN. They've also worked on rolling over the other ones. So this year's expenses are high. 
they have their estimates in here. IT is going through as we speak and replacing them with the actual based upon the bills. So some will go down, some may go up. This was their estimate that you've seen across the board for telephone expenses. But when we have mobile hotspots everywhere and we're running fiber everywhere and instead of doing a bounce point from one to the place 30 yards away, they ran two fiber lines. Well, you're going to pay several hundred dollars a month for those fiber lines. So that's a contract we're stuck in. It doesn't expire until 2022, 20, 23. Mm -hmm. We're stuck with it. I ran onto this about three weeks ago for the first time. I didn't realize it, but they did run fiber to each one of our facilities. Um, why is debatable. Um, we we had capabilities, but they were they we were having to service them this way. We don't have to service them. AT and T service them, but it upped our overall phone bill about a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and we're we're in a contract until twenty twenty three. And at that time, IT is looking at ways to, to reverse a lot of that. But uh, we'll have plenty of time to figure out where we need fiber and where we don't, and uh, going forward. But that's the reason for that telephone increase. Sounds like a fascinating backstory. <laughs> Maybe another time, <laughs> but it's it's a head it's a little bit of a head shaker. Well, I want to say your fiber bill runs. Oh no! It's, if you run a if they run a dedicated fiber, I get where the costs are coming from. It's just interesting that <clears throat> it's interesting they're running dedicated fiber for for voice, right? Because it it use voice uses almost no bandwidth. Well, that's why I was trying to, you know, is it voice or is it data, and is that what we're it's running for, our it's for our internet. chain? It's for our internet, so telephone may not be a correct. Yeah, no, that may That's be where all of our internet and phone charges go is in the telephone expense. Uh, okay. That's all of your telephone connectivity, whether it's internet, fax line. Okay. It, it's all housed there. Okay. Tom, sounds like a good topic to explore at another point in time. Mm -hmm. no. Are we ready to move on to Soto Marina? Yep. Mm -hmm. Alright, so overall Soto revenue is down a little bit from what it was for 2021's budget. Um, a lot of that has to do with the food sales. If you can see right here what they budgeted in 2021, thinking food and beverage would take off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back down to more yeah. realistic. Yeah. Um, your payroll is a is a drop. You don't have the full time wages. You've got all the part time wages there, so you you lose some of the the benefit cost. Um, let's see. Going down through their expenses. Looks like your biggest adjustment was for the maintenance of buildings, which is their allocation in here. They budgeted based upon the prior year when we started doing allocations. That's what they came up with all their work orders. This year it's been trending a lot less, so they've adjusted it back down. Uh, electricity, this was getting our meters lined out with where they actually go, so it's much less than what you see for the 2021 budget. That's just due to cleanup that we're trying to get taken care of. Uh, the telephone. So you can see right here, they budget. We've already spent eight thousand dollars year to date. They've got it for nine thousand here, but we budgeted twenty nine uh, for twenty one. So we're trying to get all of that line back out. Okay. They have one thing in capital, and it is the kayak uh, rental replacement to your plan for five thousand dollars. What's the utilization of the kayaks? Non-stop. We make a ton of, that's where we make all our money on our kayak rentals and boat rentals okay. at the marina. Okay. Okay. Any questions regarding the marina? Nope. Okay. The Coronado Community Center. Um, revenue, we're 
expecting it to be way less than what we budgeted in the past. It's going to come in more realistic. Um, the cost of food is pretty spot on with the way it was for 2021. Your wages have dropped a little bit. That's due to the part time here. You can see the full time has gone up a, a small amount. It looked like pre-COVID, the revenue stream was totally different. Did COVID drive people to alternate locations and now they're just not coming back or? Well, if you look at way 2020's actual ended up. Yeah, I mean, 18 and 19 <laughs> actual, 18 and 19 actuals were, were much larger numbers. Yeah. And then of course, COVID hits in 20. Mm -hmm. You know, and, it, and and of course we were ravaged because we had to shutter the most of the facilities. It looks like folks have found alternate locations during that span of time, and it looks like maybe they're just not planning on coming back. I mean, that is that is accurate. It started actually before COVID. People finding alternate facilities like the churches, mm -hmm. trademark real estate just right down the road. You can have a meeting there for free. Mm -hmm. I know the two groups that rented this this building for mm -hmm. their monthly meetings don't any longer because they just go down the street. Sure. But uh, a lot of folks from COVID just really aren't coming back. And we've noticed that there's a lot, there was a lot more uh, organizations and groups and their attendance was a lot higher than it is. It seems like not as many people are just in clubs now. That's kind of been trending down. And that's where your two major factors are in the budget variance for the revenue is in the rental emissions and room rentals. I think it was 48,000 of the 49. Yeah. When I look at the revenues and in particular costs of goods sold, uh, so particularly food, uh, you have roughly $8,000 of um, cost of goods, but maybe uh, 20000 in revenue, which rightly or wrongly. Um, we got 1250 in revenue for food. Yeah, but then you're talking mixed drinks, wine, and beer. I mean, I tend to mix all those together. Is that oh. Just the wrong way to do it? Yeah. No, you're fine. I, I thought well, you were just I mean, being Well, I mean, then I conclude that when you have these events, like a play or something like that, and you're serving mostly liquor, mm -hmm. uh, that drives a lot of um, beneficial economic activity. Yeah. So I guess the question is, if that is essentially your big money maker, is there anything on earth we can do to encourage that, I, I assume that you figured that one out already, but I mean, it's just such an obvious question. Put, put a well, sign out we, front that says, please drink more. Well, I mean, no, just put on My Fair Lady every, you know, every week or something like that. And I realize that, uh, you know, whoever is doing these events that then drive catering, essentially, I mean, I assume, like Larry said, it, it's not easy to get them. Yeah. go to the Coronado Community Center. And it's also probably true, it's not easy for them to do the good ones. But that strikes me all, all in terms of, you know, well, to what degree can we control programming mm -hmm. as opposed to we're mostly reactive? Most of our programs and events have the bar open. We, every single concert, the only concerts that we have over here that don't have the bar open are the ones that are on Sunday. Uh, other than that, it's open uh, at the Coronado Center. Heck, we even opened up, started opening up the bar for Mingo, okay. where it wasn't in the past. So, so more Bingo. Yeah, more Bingo. <laughs> well, and there's three of our food and beverage departments that have been moved into Rec just within the last month or so. Mm -hmm. So FB 25, 35, and 45, which <laughs> I know numbers. Um, one of them went to DeSoto Marina, one of them went to the Coronado Center, and then one of them went to the Pont Center. So those were being ran by food and beverage up till okay. right now. Okay. So we've included all of the cost for the historic, you know, being able to see the trend. And then now maybe they'll be able to, like you said, Tom, go in and apply some different methodologies to, to boost some of that and work get in conjunction with each other. Certainly alcohol is a, you know, you look at the markups here, Cost of cost of goods sold for food versus food sales, you're up 150 percent. You're up 300 to 400 percent on drink sales, which is why people open bars and not restaurants. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Okay. 
know, we'd already went over the wages. We were down here. There haven't been any huge changes as far as the expense goes. Um, and they have one item in capital, and that is the audio system needs to be upgraded um, in their, the main room over there. So they're replace that. Updated and dilapidated system at CCC. More detailed info available in request and proposal. So, so what? What's the plan? Uh, I don't have that exactly with me. Paul Moore, our tech guy, has it, but I can again. He has a detailed plan of exactly what that is. How much is it utilized? Uh, I would say maybe thirty times a year with the beboppers dance. Again, you need the tech for the bingo that they do. The players have plays there about three times a year, uh, multiple night plays. So. My right now we're having to haul stuff from, from the woodlands over to the Coronado Center to put on some of the events and plays that the groups and organizations do. So you got, so you got disconnect damage, reconnect damage yeah. potential. <laughs> My understanding is a lot of the technology that they have in this building and that building is outdated. Yeah. Well, and so they're they're putting band-aids on to try to be able right. to just keep going. Yeah. When we get here, that for instance, the projector that we have in the budget, the projector we use for our shows here is so old, it doesn't even have an HDI, HDMI input. So have we gone to the, uh, I forget what, non nonprofit supports the arts here for the woodlands have we gone to them and asked them to purchase it well, we've done some things like all these tvs in here we did a, a, a grant in conjunction with our arts council and we actually did another grant with the community foundation arts council uh, they're going to make a decision i believe next next month if we're awarded it to do some things like this over there in the that card casa uh, card room so we can utilize that more than just the, mm -hmm. the card club kind of updating it like that but yeah we're doing grants in conjunction with them and a lot of the things that we have, a lot of these organizations paid, like our, our lift that we use at the stage, the players purchased that. And there's, a, there's a lot of instances where groups have purchased equipment for us. I just throw that out there because it seems to me we would ask them first to see if they would do the upgrade for us. We'll, well, definitely, we bring it up every time we have. We meet once a, or every other month with all the groups, all the local groups, and we kind of have all that kind of discussion. Because mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's not that much money for groups to contribute to. Yeah. A lot of our groups do. Uh, I mean, they use our. They do shows here for fundraisers. That's a. A lot of the outstanding touring shows we have mm -hmm. are brought on by outside groups that, that do it for fundraising. So. Uh, so you could ask. We could we could ask them for sure. I get some of it anyway. <clears throat> okay. But just in case, we've got it. In. <laughs> Anything else on? So does Paul have any other things that we're not aware of? Um, yeah, you'll get to one over the Ponce building. When yeah, on our 400. Okay. So I think at some point we need to talk to Paul about all these ideas and how they compare to the OMT and that kind of stuff. Well, they weren't in the OMT because exactly. he wasn't part of building it. Mm -hmm. Was that? He wasn't part of building it. Yeah. So you're working off a document that was created almost a year ago, and we've had so many staffing changes and people moving around. Yeah, but this is part of the discipline of the process, you know. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like, okay, you got a great idea. We'll take a look at it next year when we go through the whole process again. Uh, otherwise, you, you don't have the discipline of the process. So, I'm sorry, okay. but that's my opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we do. We have to get it built in, but maybe it's not a 22 building. But that's that's my point. Yeah. All right. So the library um, revenue down a little bit from the budget before. It's it's on track with how we're looking for this year. But up nicely compared to previous history. I'm sure the bundle's probably been beneficial there. 
Well, they increased the prices of the library fee in 21 by like quite a bit, and that's where a big part of your difference has come from. The bundle also helps, yes. But, uh, wages, same issue. Just cleaning it up to a little bit more of the actual. Your expenses are pretty in line, except we got an amount in here for contracts. Um, contract for the book filing system, it was left off the budget in here last year. That's with, is it Thundertix? Is that what that is? Is this on the library? Yes. No, Not this Thunder is their, it's basically the, for lack of a better term, it's the filing system that they use. The standard library, Dewey Decimal, <laughs> whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Dewey Decimal System, yeah. Gotcha. Is that like, is that a buy or is that a, like a, like an annual yeah. renewal? Is that a subscription or something? It's an annual renewal that they pay every year. And that's all we've got in library. Any other questions? Okay. The Coronado Fitness Center. Uh, you're a little bit under budget for what 2021 was, more in line with how things are actually trending. It is up more um, than what we're looking for this year, but this includes part of that bundle as well. Your wages have, the full-time have gone up a little bit. It's your part-time that have drastically reduced. So it comes in less than budgeted for 21. Um, fertilizers and chemicals is up a little bit, but that's with how it's trending for the year. I'm trying to kind of get back up on top of some of that maintenance and all that, and the pool and, and so forth. See, some of your other big jumps were this sewer and sanitation, based upon how it's it's actually trending. That's general insurance, and then the only capital item they had in there is the annual fitness center equipment replacement. So, uh, trying to replace a few of the worn out pieces of equipment they have. And they typically try to get four or five pieces a year. Yeah. So, judging from the fitness center, that's got to be about an eight or ten year replacement program because you got to have 40 or 50 pieces of equipment in there. Okay. Any questions regarding the fitness center? Um, part time wages, generally half of historical. Just, could you just comment on that? I mean, I assume that's a pretty big headcount head reduction. A lot of it would be our lifeguards. We got approved by the state to not operate with lifeguards. Okay. So that's going to be a significant amount of that. And then also back to that 10,080 versus 546. Okay. This was, was this that's lifeguards in the both. fitness center or lifeguards in the outdoor pool? Both. both. Our oh. approval was for all places. Okay. I did not realize it was broadly applicable. Okay. We try to offer about 20 to 30 hours max during the week with guarded mm -hmm. and then the rest is unguarded. Okay. And then Tom, to speak to yours, like I said, if you consider the fact we counted 10,080 hours for a part-time down to 546, that's where your cost is half of what it was. Mm -hmm. Again, you can see the, the chemicals. Oh, we already went over this one. Sorry. Any other questions regarding fitness center? So the, just uh, just since we got you here, so the fitness center replacement, equipment replacement, I, I got that. So there's a plan for how all that looks for over, over time? There, there is a plan. Now, it is hard to dictate what, what machinery breaks down when it does, but it that. is under warranty. Uh, 30,000 is typical. Last year, we only did 15, mm -hmm. because it was cut because of COVID. 30000 is the traditional amount that we we put each year to just replace all the... And I think we got four or five treadmills this yeah. year. Okay. Um, when I'm looking at the overall revenues, uh, 
22 budget is 380,000. Year end forecast is 290. Twenty twenty is two seventy. I mean, I think we all appreciate that twenty twenty and twenty twenty one are bad years. It's still a pretty big increase. In just confirming, you, you still feel pretty good about. Yeah, and I'm thinking about increase. these numbers. They were literally August to August, mm -hmm. and we did the same thing not only on on these on these numbers, but also with the facility rentals. It was just just brought out, assuming mm -hmm. uh, the uh, fees that we that were proposed. Mm -hmm. You just tack in the numbers that we sold from August to August, and that, that's where that number comes from. Well, and the fitness center does get the largest part of the allocation from the bundle as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. And Paul's here, and he can answer some questions if you want to go back about the Coronado Center tag. Your stuff that's not in the seven-year O&M that you say you need now. you got to justify it. <laughs> the stuff that's, that you've identified that we need for this building and the Coronado Center that is not in the seven-year O&M, Mm -hmm. True justification of why it needs to be done in 2022 versus pushed out further and incorporated into the O&M. Oh, sure. You want me to explain why right now? Kicking. Go for it. Yeah, I invite y'all to come out here and, and validate everything I'm going to tell you. All the parts in there, the and John Paul can actually back me up on this. Every event I've had in there that required any kind of tech, I've had to physically rebuild take out screwdrivers, break apart power amps, uh, fix them at the last second. Uh, all the wiring in there that comes into the building for the stages or anything that's wired in there for audio wise is in con, the metal condo it has been there since maybe early 80s and it's all broken apart. I have to go back in there and find out what gets ripped out every single time. And it's got to the point where uh, the speakers that are hanging up there, they are actually the parts that are in it are my personal parts, me keeping it alive. The horns that are in there have my 22, my personal 22 XT drivers in it. I'm tired of bringing my equipment and my stuff from my house to make sure the POA runs at that facility. I did it forever with the lights. I'm not doing it again with the, with the audio. So if we want to continue to use that facility to for special events, we've got a town hall tomorrow. I have to tear all this out of here. That, all of that every microphone, all the stands, to take it over there for the town hall tomorrow. We have to start doing something because I don't have, we don't have the manpower or the equipment to do what people want to do. And this is just a start. So it depends upon, that's the reason, I mean, I wasn't in on part of the, set, the seven year old AM on this one. So, uh, so without, they just didn't know. But that's what it, that's what it amounts to. This is a start. Uh, later on, I would actually recommend that we could actually make it, if we want to use that building and make it where it's a facility that people want to come to, it'd be nice to be able to like, uh, do a matrix type system where, hey, the audio is going on here, video, let's make it go off in room one, two, three, four, five, and six, where you can actually incorporate the entire building into one big function. But it's something, it's things that we want to do, but this is just a start. Now we did, I think it was like three years ago, I did take all the old chicken coop lights, literally chicken coop lights, out of there and replace them with LEDs so people were not literally having strokes on stage from the heat. And I don't know if y'all remember that, but there was, it was literally Before my farm supply. They cut holes in it, put in heat lamp bulbs, and that was the entire thing. I was literally having people passing out on, up there. I said, this cannot happen. So I put a digitally controlled uh, LED type system in there so people wouldn't stroke out up there. That was the beginning. That was a start. So this is a continuation from that. So if we, if it's decided that we don't want to go that route and wait, that's okay. But I can't guarantee that we can continue doing things over there without, without, I need, I need help. You mentioned cabling in conduit. Does that mm -hmm. have to, all of that have to be pulled? No, I, 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 I would personally. Because what I'm proposing is, is be is a digital type system. It runs off Cat five, or Cat six, so it's there are two pieces. But right now, all the old cabling that's been there for, Lord knows how long, probably 80s. And being honest with you, this old building cable been there probably since the 80s, the early 80s. It runs through conduit that's got slip couplings on it, and they get, get ripped off the stage with people moving stuff. And it's been there forever. And it's cracking, it's breaking up in the lines going up to the ceiling. So I have to literally trace it for a show. I don't know it's broken. Go up there, pull it, tone it out, find it, 
pull it out, solder it, pull it back through, things like that. But no, it wouldn't be, it would just be two cables, literally two cables going down there for the entire uh, connected system. Back but as to the far solder. as the items that you have in here right now, mm -hmm. the, uh, for the Coronado Center, it's the, the main audio system upgrade. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna jump over to Ponce, where we're at here. You've got the Woodlands projection screen. That's correct. And the um, audio media upgrade. Replace the that is That is for the projector. The what? That one's for the projector. So for those items, the justification of needing them now is you cannot. Okay. Well, the thing is, like I said, it's part of that thing. I do have a giant write up if y'all want it. I mean, it's four or five pages long if you want to get into the weeds on it. But the projector on it, I was actually in IT and I got it in 2010, eight? No, it was 2008 or nine. So it's actually a boardroom projector. They don't even make it anymore. I can't get parts for it anymore. It is the main projector where we do all our shows or anything that's going on over there. If it goes, I'm done. I do not have any recourse. Um, those little bitty mini projectors. And actually the one we have right now is called, it's 7,000 lumens. Lumens is the intensity of the brightness of it. We've been wanting to bring in any kind of like uh, the film festival or anything like that. When you look at those riders, they call tech riders on those, they have minimum of 12,000 for those. So I'm having even trouble just pushing, especially since we upgraded to LED on there with a bunch of our on stage lighting, I'm having trouble even getting it to push through it for certain things. So that 25, it sounds like a lot, but there's really not for a projector for a large size. I mean, we're talking, if you look at the uh, Christie types and things like that, you can go up to 150,000. So I'm not asking for anything like that extravagance, just something that will work well. Uh, the projector sold doesn't even have HDMI on it. No joke, it's VGA. And I'm having to convert and do things like that and have, it doesn't have H -based, HD base T on it so I can run, so I can make setting changes from up there. I have to literally be on stage and do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank that you. Make, that makes sense? Yeah. I mean, we can get in the weeds. I, no. I love I love that. I no, love doing good. that. It, it, those that know me. Yeah, so, that's good. Just why that's, we... that's the reason why it's there. Okay. Okay. And at least, at least maybe you can get to bring your own equipment back home eventually. Well, I mean, I don't mind. I don't care. I've done it for years, but it's just like, whew, I don't know. If, I don't know how long I'll be able to do that and keep it going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. Um, did you guys have any other questions on the fitness center? I think we were done there. Yeah. So Ponce is this building. Um, your biggest driver here is the room rentals, um, the revenue going up. I'll let you speak to that since it, it is quite a bit larger. You've got the Casa de Carta, the Woodlands, the concerts versus what we had budgeted this year, which I, this shows it's really just the fact COVID hit us and we did not budget to have anything taking place. If you look at the history over 18 yep. and 19, yep. we then still, still coming back. we're not even back up to that part yet. We're still coming back. No, we are going to take a hit on the car club as well because we have a contract with them for $3,250 a month that uh, we're just, we're not enforcing that right now. And they don't have the players to do that because of the COVID. It's, they, they haven't been able to come back. So we actually we're going down from thirty two fifty to a thousand dollars a month with them on average. The other increases is, is that rentals emissions that covers when groups come in and do a show at the Woodlands, that money comes in there. Or last year there was wasn't hardly any shows. So that's the increase. Um, if you feel good about the room rentals going up four times? Yes, because it's all concerts. Now, I mean, if you're talking about renting these rooms out, I would not I'd feel horrible about it. But it's, concert series. it's the concert. So it goes off. That's what goes on. Each concert yeah. is okay. basically close to fifteen hundred dollars a night that we make. They didn't do it last year. Yeah. As a sideline, I, I think you all need to be made aware of something you may or may not know. But just as a memo entry here, the car club had a 25 year lease on that building over there that they built for that car club in the very beginning. Over that 25 years, they literally paid for that building. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's maintenance going forward with a, with a rental on that agreement. But I just thought you might like to, to know the overall. We are down some staff. Your wages uh, from full time from 21's budget. You didn't add any new positions here, right? It was just that it hasn't been filled. It well, my position prop is off of this. Okay, right. that's what it was. Yeah. yeah, some realigning some. You you are now under R100. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, Expense wise, there's not any big changes there. They've got a couple thousand in there for non cap, um, some chair and table replacements that they need to do. Let's see. Everything else. That's sanitation. They don't have any control over that one. Let's see. And then, capital wise, like I said, they've got the wooden lens projection screen, uh, the parking lot repair. And they're planning to do that in two phases. So part of it this year, or part of it in 2022, and then the other half in 23, trying to spread that cost out a little bit. Um, and then the media audio upgrade. Any questions on pond? So it's the landscaping improvement? It's yeah. The, all the parking lot and all the shrubs that died. We lost 53 the, plants in that February uh, snow. So trying to get that back up to par. And maybe try to go with, uh, instead of mulch, uh, rock. Mm -hmm. Cut over a long life, and it's initially a little bit more expensive maintenance-wise, it's obviously. That actually needs to be under R-150. That, the landscape out here? Mm-hmm. Okay. That needs to be moved. Okay. Any other questions regarding plants? So what if we didn't replace them? It, what you got right there is what it looks like. The mulch is, our, is really my biggest thing. I don't, we're having to just buy mulch every single year. It's hard to maintain. It's hard to, you know, we can make it look again really nice for an event. Then, you know, it, it rains or the wind blows. People can get, you have mulch all over the place. And you're trying to get some of that rock put in, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we want the rock put in. We do want these. When you go in this front entry, those trees in this landscape, it, it drops those. I can't remember what they're called. Those things that look like a like an old school war thing oh, <laughs> with needles all over it. I the mean, gum tree? The gum tree, yeah. yeah. Trying to get something more sensible for a parking lot of a facility. And something that just, again, drops 200 or tree, it seems like. <laughs> Is 7,500 enough for all of that? We're doing it in stages. That's why we Even split it. Even for one year. I think so. I mean, and I trust Norman's number that he gave me when he, he buys all that equipment. I know what I put in my yard when I built my house last year, and it wasn't $7,500. <laughs> <laughs> like of that. So our last one here is the pool, the outdoor pool. I don't know what that was, sorry. I don't know how to get it to go away either. Uh, there. So revenue projected at almost 30,000. We had 18 for this year. Now, that part of that recreation bundle goes into here as well, does it not? That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is your jump here on your outdoor pool. Let's see. Everything else there is in line. Let's see. And then the wages. Are we having more people out at the outdoor pool than this year? 
was less. By no, half. we're having less. less you were by budgeted half. for 22.5, and you got 12.5 and 22. So. Yeah, I was looking at our year to date though. Yeah. But that was as of July. You still had two yeah. months left to be open. So yeah. dumb question. Myself. Sorry. Crazy short staff. Electricity. Everything else is pretty straightforward here. Uh, the only capital that they are requesting is uh, a roof over their chemical area for the outdoor pool. Uh, my understanding is right now it's all open, and so their equipment and, and all that is open to the elements. So I'm trying to get that covered to be maintained longer. So I'm assuming, which is a dangerous thing to do, but I'm assuming that anything that got put out there in open air has the capability to tolerate the open air. You know, like pumps, pumps, whatever chemical containers are in that space and all of that sort of thing. Right now it, it is, but again all the, the flow meters and all that when they're out in the conditions in this heat and the sun again they took a big beating on that winter that we had with it just being wide open as far as getting iced over so i mean as far as, as the big chemical containers they're they're fine what they want to put in is, a, is an open air like a gap between the existing structure here and then have a ventilation fan in there to make it safe i don't know if i'm answering your question but kind of you what, know what's being protected yeah. That all the the engine pumps and the and the, the meters and the gauges and things of that nature. Because it sound it sounds like either one of two things happened. Either we didn't put the right equipment in there to begin with that was able to tolerate the outside environment, or we did put the right equipment in there to tolerate the outside environment and it doesn't need a roof. I don't, know, I don't know which seen, one I, the answer I, is. No, I, it's I, one of those two. I've really never seen an outdoor chemical, outdoor pool chemical house without a roof. No, <laughs> building maintenance put that in there, didn't they? Yes. But it, so it was requested by him. us, though. That was one that we did request that. We don't know why. Do what? We don't know why, though. Yeah, because, it, again, I think, I understand what you're saying. If, if we didn't build a roof, we would have had equipment that doesn't need it, but... Mm -hmm. Through uh, over the last two years, you can tell that the, <laughs> it needs to be covered. But we haven't had anything malfunction yet, though, have we? Yes, that's what we we have. What has malfunctioned? The flow meters had to be replaced. The uh, the sensors that uh, read the uh, acid and and chlorine in the pool had to be replaced. So I guess where, where I'm going with this is I, I'm, I'm concerned because there's already 168 buildings out there that have to be maintained. This would now be building 169, if my math's right. Uh, might want to look at the trade space, what would be required, because it sounds like there's equipment out there that maybe should have been protected but wasn't protected, so now relatively short time down the line it's now deteriorated might want to look at the trade on whether or not it's cheaper to replace the malfunctioning components with components that can handle the outside environment and save yourself the cost of the building and the ongoing maintenance and support of the building versus putting a roof over yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know what the right answer is you have, somebody have to run the numbers and see because it could be those pieces of equipment are it would be cheaper to replace expensive. those pieces of equipment every year, every other year, I'm sure. Well, it's not, but it's not re replacing them every year, every other year. It's replacing them with a piece of equipment that can actually handle the weather. Yeah. I mean, there's how many how many pools are wandering around and hotels and things like that that are, you know, that handle all this kind of stuff. So there's there's got to be equipment out there that can handle that, that's ANSI rated. That can Was it supposed to have a roof over it and just didn't get? Done. It was never in the proposed plan to have to recover it. Getting into that outdoor pool is going to reopen a book mm -hmm. that a lot of people, a lot of ordinary lay people solve problem, design problems. So 
Uh, this won't be the last. This won't be the last problem. It sounds like there needs to be some more digging into it, anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think some more analysis for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. I, I. You know, it sounds like there's a problem that needs to be fixed. But what's the most expedient way to fix the problem? Mm -hmm. And then the other part of it is, if there's, is this just a canary in the cage associated with other things that are out there? You know, I don't know the. You know, not. Not having the data, no, no way to know what that is. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, if you got two or three pieces of equipment that are malfunctioning and have had to be replaced, does that mean that two oh. or three years down the line you're going to have another handful of pieces of equipment that are going to that are going to fail? They just fail slower. Yeah. I think we need to do a little more digging in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so that is the completion for recreation, though. Cool. Any overall questions for Terry before he runs away? Nope. Thanks, Don't run too far, Terry. No, I'm not. And I can bring you all I can send to Karina a copy of the detail of the specs of what that mowing contract would entail. Okay. So y'all can do that. That would, that would be good. Okay. Or at least get with the golf department or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk to the other department. As long as somebody's got the dot and know they have the dot, that's yeah. really the key. Whoever, whoever's got the dot knows they got the dot from not just their stuff, but yeah. the accumulated set of stuff. As long as they know they own it, peace, let them run with it. Ask Tom if his guys are really able to keep up around the clubhouses and all that kind of stuff. I'll do it. Thank you, Terry. Thank Thanks. you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks. Which other one do y'all want? Everyone pull up. Y'all tell me. We got food and beverage, safety. Do food and beverage, it's fast. Do food and beverage, that ought to be quick. <laughs> There's lots of tabs, but most of them aren't important anymore. So. <laughs> All right, so overall, you're going from 54 employees down to seven yeah. across all food and beverage. Um, you've gone from a 2021's budget of $441,000 loss to almost $100,000. So $300,000 in savings there. Mm -hmm. So food and beverage admin, you can see budget has been <laughs> completed or depleted. Um, there's still some of the hardware stuff in here. Like I said, we're working on those allocations, so that'll be cleaned up. So it'll go down to zero. Um, Magellan is one we're still operating. And you can see budget is pretty much spot on for year to year, along with how it's trended, besides 2020. Um, your payroll is running around the same, or I'm sorry, your cost of goods is running around the same. Your payroll, let's see, here there was an increase that moved some people over, I believe is what happened on this one, from the other locations. Uh, I'll go back in and double check that because I've got the other R200 to check, so make sure there's nothing else funny sitting out there. So a question for you on that, so um, if you move more people over there, does that mean the hours of operation are going to improve? Well, they moved on, um, when did we... They're open seven days now. Are they open seven days now? Yeah. They're open seven days now. Uh, I've got another meeting, but just as an overview of it all, we, you may or may not have heard, we lease Coronado now. And they'll be taken over November 1st, so that brings us down to Magellan is the only course that we're operating. I've always, uh, we, we had that when I was in the golf department. We always broke even with Magellan or, or lost maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars a year. And I think we can get there again. I think it could be a five or six thousand dollar loss now in, in Magellan. I always thought it was important that we keep one facility just to keep everybody honest with beer prices and everything else. Uh, but um, we, we're not looking at uh, leasing out Magellan. Uh, but the, the, I mean, we could, but we, we're not right now. But that's the overall state of the restaurants right now. Okay. Thank you, Chad. I've got another meeting. She's got it. Thank you. 
Yeah, because that, that's where our remaining, what is it, six, seven people are, would be Magellan. Um, like I said, I want to go back in and double check this figure right here for, for the wage piece. Um, your expenses are pretty Relatively normal. in line, and that's all we've got there. All of these are ones that we've had. Um, Balboa, we're still going to have our operating expense and our contractual receipts. Mm -hmm. So there's the receipts coming in and the expenses for maintenance of buildings, insurance, and so forth that go against it. Um, we do, it's one meter, so we incur the bill, we turn around and charge them. That's why you see that again up here on the revenue side. That one's pretty straightforward. Any questions about Balboa? Mm -hmm. Did you have any questions about Magellan? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. FB25 is one that went into rec uh, for the Ponce Center Bar, so the budget is now zero. DeSoto is now leased. So you've got the contractual receipts that go there as well, uh, on the chargebacks, and the expenses that go against it. What's the miscellaneous in that item up there? The contractual receipts made sense. The twenty grand. It doesn't have a budget in there. I have to look it up. No problem. Just more curiosity than anything else. Probably a typo. So there is, though, at DeSoto Club, some two capital items, right? At the soda club? My tablet. Oh, yes. Uh, exterior paint and replumbing for the kitchen. There's been a lot of leaks, so the water bill for over there has been through the roof. So they're needing to go in and, and fix those pipes that are under the floor. They've been have, I know twice in the last year they've had to go over there due to a massive leak and trying to navigate and find it and replace it. So. Are they under the floor? Yes. Mm. It's under the concrete. That'll be fun. So that's to try to get it all taken care of and, and be done with it. Get out of there for 15K, you'll be doing well. <clears throat> and the exterior paint, it says cut from 2020, and we didn't address it in 21. Yeah, it probably got, it was cut twice. So trying to get back to where we're actually doing the maintenance and maintaining our things. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Waypoint is one that moved to food and beverage. Okay. So it is zero now. The 19th hole, all we have is the maintenance of buildings. They're using it for storage at this point. FB45 went to recreation for the Canada Center. Mm -hmm. So that is zero. FB50 is a lease, that's Cortez. So the contractual receipts, the expenses that go against it, uh, the maintenance of the building, and no capital. Coronado, this one um, is the one that they've just now decided to, to lease out as well, so we're in the process of zeroing it out. Isabella. You just have the small two maintenance pieces. Same with Granada. And Ponce is leased. Cool. So, and that is all food and beverage. <clears throat> Are the uh, contractual receipts just a fixed amount? And so you're not charging them the actual, like for actual electricity or whatever? It, it, it depends if if we're paying the electricity we are doing a, a bill back and that's going into it and they're receiving a bill each month if the utility is, meter is um, separate then it's just a flat fee and they're taking care of utilities on their own so some of them you're going to see we're going to have more expenses because it's not a split meter and stuff like that um, other ones it would just be taxes and maintenance of building okay but basically you're for all intents and purposes you're charging they're leasing the space from the POA. Yes. And then you've, you've got an agreement with the POA to lease it for however much per month the lease fee is. And then uh, if they've got their own 
if, if that particular facility has its own electric meter, then they pay their own electric bill. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't have its own electric meter, then it's a shared responsibility between them and us, and the least money they pay us helps defray our operating cost on the building. We bill them back for it. So your contractual receipts would be the rent plus. Ah, the so that's what the contractual so you actually receipts figure are. out what their portion of the electric bill was and charge them. Okay. okay. So that so that's their that's their prorated share footage. of, the, of okay. the bill. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That also answers the question. You don't have to research anymore. <laughs> Can we go back to uh, the soto? Um, okay. That one. So what I'm looking at is the seventy-eight thousand. Yeah, that that bunch of numbers. Um, so just going forward, that's kind of what it's just going to look like every year. So yeah. That's kind, of, that's kind of the carrying cost of the building. Yes. And then uh, if you go up to the revenue line, it's thirty thousand uh, for. Uh, like it's 50. essentially a lease. More like 50. And 50, really, it's these two would probably be together and they oh, okay. just misplaced it and put it on the wrong line. The 30000 okay, and the 20000 in the recouping. They just generally just... kind of, we kind of think next year, the next year after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. yeah, the net carrying cost uh, of those two items is 28000 Well, but recognize that yeah. you've also got a golf shop in that same building. Right, but so, I mean, just as far as this this statement here. Yeah. So yeah. two thirds. So two thirds of the carrying cost of the building right. is being maintained by the by the individual that's leasing yeah. the building okay. from. Yeah. Right. And that's that. That's all I can say. But yeah, so I'm still gonna go back and double check these figures. Right. But okay. that would be your rolling cost. That's okay. that is okay. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions there? Okay. So C D thirty um is kind of like the admin side of it. So you've got your wages here, they've gone down drastically. That is because I've reclassed or allocated one of their top people um, to be under admin going for next year. Where are we? I'm sorry. I'm Compliance. Uh, C30. C30. So there's a big drop in, in the payroll expense here. This is innovation. And that's because it was a shift. Operating expenses. They're plugging this one in right now. Everything else is minimal. Um, the legal and professional fees. Pull this note over. So the GIS software that they've got, uh, the annual imagery part, mm -hmm. then it's moved. I've been through these guys a million times, and I'm sorry. There's always something to mm -hmm. <laughs> The GIS cost is the one you're talking about? Yeah, that would actually need to be software, not legal and professional, I think. I want to go back and confirm that. Yeah, it's, it's Is that GIS update applicable to all of our GIS software across the entire organization? It gets split between public utilities and here. So that's why I said I'm, I'm going to go back and double check that piece. Okay. They both have access to it, so they should be sharing that cost. What? Make, make sure they didn't double count or something like that? Well, it would seem like multiple organizations would have access used to access to GIS, streets department. <coughs> well, that's on public works. Yeah, you said public utilities. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's what I was saying. Sorry. I would yeah. think public utilities would want it too for the sewer and water lines. I mean, there's lots of organizations. Yeah. I mean, Why is stuff like this at software not an IT? Well, it was, but it's part of that allocation. So IT is still in charge of it, but we're charging it to the areas that are it's actually applicable to. Okay. Allocations make your head hurt. But, but see, would you run into a problem where you've got, say, it's streets, for example, that decides 
they want to go out and spend twenty thousand dollars on a piece of software that they didn't communicate with IT on, mm -hmm. and then IT gets stuck with that stuck hitting their budget. So this it comes back to stop working in silos, work together. You're going to pay for it, but you still need to work with the department that's in charge of it. So, so, so IT is in charge of it. They just shouldn't have to pay for it. So essentially, IT's IT's got the responsibility for establishing and maintaining all of the contracts, and all yes. they're doing is allocating their yes. the the associated charges <clears throat> for a particular piece of software back to the right departments. Correct. So, yeah. And we've seen it happen. Oh yeah. And no, I understand. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yes, it does it just, make things. It makes it extremely difficult to follow, and for property owners as a general, it is almost even doubly difficult to explain it to them. So, yeah. I, you know, we're going to have to figure out how you do some kind of translator or something like that so that the common person out there can understand because they're not going to track. Well, anything that's in software things. maintenance, anything that's in hardware or in <coughs> software is all controlled by IT, no matter what department it's in. Those three accounts belong to IT. Vehicle maintenance, vehicle, or vehicle maintenance and equipment maintenance belong to fleet. They don't belong to every other department that they're in. Building maintenance belongs to buildings, not where it's at, so. So do they allocate an invoice, they, they do something, mm -hmm. 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. And do they charge that invoice directly to the department? Yes. depending on which piece it is. If it's something that's applied across the board, we've done a fixed allocation. So like for example, Office 365, you get 340 mm -hmm. subscriptions. It's broken down by how many have those subscriptions in each department. Yeah. Now, if it's literally IT has gone out and, and bought a, a new laptop for Jason, it gets coded to Jason from the get-go. The others, it gets coded to an allocation account, and then the system spreads it out. Where I was headed with this is, like, do you know, like, what IT, just, if you're looking at just IT, what is that IT costing you? Here. With that rolling up. Let me show you guys. like my house just because it's connected doesn't mean it runs fast. <laughs> that was running through my head in the discussion about running fiber to some of the various facilities is it's like, gee, what kind of, what kind of deal can we make with the phone company to provide, to give them some bandwidth in that fiber because we're probably using about a half a percent of the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I actually get an uploaded speed that doesn't look like somebody working with a cocktail straw. If I want to know what IT is in charge of and what they're running me, $631,000 is what they've got in there for expenses so far across the de every department. Mm -hmm. So here's the originator. That sounds about right. Here's the department. Here's the category. And here's what it covers. Mm -hmm. All the way down. So they know this is their, their list of stuff all the way through, including capital. If I wanted to go and see what building maintenance had for their to-do list, this is everything that they have put in for other buildings, capital and, and so forth, that apply to them. Same so it, thing. So it looks like we've got the, it looks like the background systems have the ability to keep all of these things correlated. The question becomes when you start talking to the community about 
expenditures and how much is being spent in which category. We'll have to be real careful that we have a consistent approach for handling some of these allocated costs. Absolutely, because that's what we pull the community in those buckets, not in the, what department's using the bucket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's where I'm telling you, if it's, if it's capital, it's going to be a little harder when you're getting into the operating and maintenance side of it, mm -hmm. because I'm going to have to rely on that department to give me more information. But when it comes to the capital, every single piece is lined out. So you don't, you're going to look at it regardless of which department it is. I'm just going to look at totally what was done, so. where it's at on track, and which job it was. <clears throat> yeah, we're just talking about your monthly reports to the board, yeah. your quarterly reports to the board. Mm -hmm. They have to be said in a certain way to be able to convey that we said we need more money for buildings. We didn't tell them that we need more money for buildings on a court auto center. Recreation has to pay for it. We said we need more money for buildings. Mm -hmm. So when we report, we need to report Here's how much more money we said we had needed for buildings, and we spent that amount of money on buildings yeah. without get, going into it was billed to this yeah. sub-department and all that kind of stuff because so, they don't care. They want to know I'm, that I'm we spent a lot of money on buildings, on street preservation program, on et cetera. Fleet, we want to know the fleet thing. There's what's in the financial report on a monthly basis right now. This is every single... Yep. Thing. So, and I can put it into categories, whether it's buildings or whatever, but this is all of it. What's been budgeted, what's been spent, and what the annual budget was. So, I can group them all, but this is all what's been put out there. Yeah. But it, like we said, it looks like you have it sorted, so we're just now it's going to be about how we articulate it. I think we'll just have to be careful for those, for those departments <clears throat> that utilize allocations. You know, uh, if you're going to pool, like buildings is a great example, if you're going to pool all the building dollars and all the building reporting in a building's bucket, that's great. But then if I'm, if I'm spending money to roof over a halfway house, a golf course, then that actual shouldn't be counted in the golf course line. It should only Correct. be counted in the building's line. So that's where it's going to get... They'll, they'll, they'll have to be, a, there'll be some teething pains associated with exactly how that gets reported until mm -hmm. that gets sorted out. But. So are you guys wanting me to stop doing allocations? Because that's kind of what I hear. No. Well, we're just trying to figure out how you then are going to translate it. Now, allocations are, God, your allocations compared to my legacy allocations in my old company are really small. <laughs> I, I never I never could figure out how our, how our, all, all of our overheads and all that got allocated out. It was a, it was an accounting disclosure statement that was about that long with the government. And there were three people in the building who knew how knew how it worked, and as long as they did, the rest of us just trusted them. But it just it just becomes a challenge for folks when they're when they're reporting actuals, you know, and what they did. We just have to make sure that they don't double count dollars and they don't double count credit for the work. We can talk later about yeah. what that, how we potentially communicate. You were on compliance. There's nothing else no. major. I have a goofy question. What does community development do? <laughs> question about that. <laughs> I mean, well, at, first is, you, at first you said compliance. Well, because it's pretty much compliance ran for a good piece of it. Mm -hmm. Community development was Stephanie. Okay. Okay, so you're looking at true community development, you're looking at running some of the operation side of stuff. She oversaw compliance because she was Charlie's supervisor um, along with marketing and discovery. Mm -hmm. So wording needs to be updated. I think in the financials it still shows innovation. Because I, I picture Charlie in a, in a car that says compliance yeah. division right. on the outside of the door with well, him checking for things 2022 and we you. Ought to, before we get to 22 yeah. we ought to rename some stuff. Yeah. Well and I think we okay. did rename that 
that division okay. um, on our paperwork. I just hadn't updated. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. also, when you look at the very first page that says summary, and you go down a couple lines, a couple, uh, it says development, yeah. focus on participating with residential and commercial builders, mm -hmm. contract oversight of all POA, these food and beverage. I mean, that doesn't sound compliancy at all. So, I, I mean, I, well, I was just dead, dead flat confused. Well, it's a, it's so. a pool. It's a pool of departments. You yes. got a compliance department. You got mm -hmm. a you got an you got a department that's seeing overseeing some of the overhead. You got whatever marketing and discovery equates to. It's just like public works has half a dozen different public works departments in it. It's a it's a pool mm -hmm. of groups that somebody runs. Mm -hmm. But in that uh, when you go to the com development tab, uh, when you look at compensation, mm -hmm. it pretty looked like there's just two people in there. Yeah. And they're doing both compliance and... No. No, okay. <laughs> compliance has its own tab right here. Compliance, permitting, and inspection is well, all okay. CD40. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is the de development doing the, it's essentially builder relationship? It's kind of like the team. admin side of both pieces of these. Okay, all right. We all, we all should recognize that the new GM will have the capability, we hope, mm -hmm. for organizing. You so may, you may see some reorganization too, once somebody gets too familiar married with to what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, but since I'm looking at the budget, usually you can get some idea of what a de department does by looking at how they spend their money. When I looked at that, I had no clue. So anyway, okay. Well, like I said, it, that was typical. It was mainly Stephanie right. and and some assistants, and it was mm -hmm. developing those community relations yeah. and and. and reaching out that way. Okay. Um, so they're still continuing to do that. There's still mm -hmm. some stuff here, some so shifting got, around. So you got the builder, you got the, basically you got the builder relationships, you've got the real estate agent relationships, and you've got any other task that somebody calls and says, can somebody from Hot Springs Village come give us information about X? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what it translates to to me. Uh, but usually when you say those tasks, associate those tasks, with Kevin Sexton, who's in... Um, he's in marketing. He's in marketing, right. But, so it's, you have these budgetary units with a lot of fluidity. <laughs> well, and that's just the, it. You guys gotta realize <laughs> that this went from having, just yeah. on high. We had CD45, CD60, right. CD70. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's been a multitude of different departments that have merged and cleared and mm -hmm. and combined. So, so still, we're down to the three. And so it's still, still a work in process. Work. It's a nice way to say it. Yeah. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. okay. Got it. I'm good. You got to move on. Are we good time wise? Not really. Okay. We need to. <laughs> All right. So you guys are fine with CD30? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty cut and dry. Uh. 40 is your permitting and inspection and compliance. It also now houses your gates, as all of this year. Mm -hmm. Starting next year, it also houses your animal control. Mm -hmm. So it's it's expanded from what it was in the past. And that's reflected in this 2020, the gates and the yes. animal controls in here. 2021 has gates. 2022 mm -hmm. has gates plus animal control. Okay. Uh, and that's why the big change in the salaries and wages and stuff like that. Because yes. you moved all the people too, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and in fact, you can see we moved one position to admin, added one new position for 2022, plus we moved two full-time people from animal control. Could you repeat, when, did, when does animal control come into this uh, it, tab? They're already under the guidance of compliance, but for sake of simplicity, they're being merged into that department come first of the year yeah. for okay. tracking purposes. So, so they're so they're reporting to that organization now. It's just not going to show up in the budget line until twenty two. Correct. Please. So, just for clarity for me, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, the twenty one budget. Not helpful. They, not helpful for like wages Correct. because you're saying so not until twenty two does well, animal control. Well, so. Yeah. 21 had an increase in, in wages. Mm -hmm. 2022 is going to have an increase in wages, but then a huge decrease from a transition. In so, what? 
It's going to have an increase from bringing on animal control. Right. It's going to have a huge decrease, an overall big decrease from moving that one person to admin. One person from admin. In each so position. The, oh. The, and so animal control. Stephanie's position is going to oh. go to admin and not be counted here. Uh, okay. It's being And that's a pretty reworked. significant switch in salaries. Yeah. Okay. So overall there's a big salaries. drop. And then animal control is new for 22. Correct. As an increase. Correct. It was in public safety. Yes. 21. So you would see a decrease there. Yes. But I've moved over all the history. So you're going to see a, a jump, but you're also should it shouldn't be a huge jump. It should still have some kind of a flow because I've moved their history. Gates, I didn't have history to move. It was a piece inside of a department. And on the control, I can move all of it. So 2018 and 19 and so on has animal control in it. Yes. Sorry, too many pieces. Well, eight, 18, and nine, 18 and 19 had animal control in it, but animal control was in public safety at, the, at that time. Yeah, so that's the numbers are. I've here. added it here. So you put it over here, so, we, so you're trying to so, you're trying to keep an apples to apples comparison. Yes. Got it. So, so when you guys all got my spreadsheets and you saw all the crap at the bottom, yeah, that was all the different departments that have to go somewhere else now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So wages increase is 171,000. I can't remember what you had on your summary page. Well, we, wages uh, increased from 2021 budget to 2022 budget. It was only 50900 and something. And that's two full-time positions that I've that's moved That's two people coming over from animal control. Yes. Okay. Got it. Sorry. The one where the big drop is is CD30. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> So overall, you're you're twenty thousand dollars above on payroll mm -hmm. for for this department. Okay. Budget over budget. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, can we go back to um, revenues? We have ACC permits new. Is that for new houses? Mm -hmm. um, I believe so. Because yeah. in yeah. twenty twenty one budget, I thought you had a hundred houses, and for twenty twenty two budget. You have 150 houses, so I would expect that number. That was 125. To be a lot well, 125. 125 right? to 150, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I would expect that well, those two numbers to be not the same. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. There well, should be more there. Ba basically, if you if you really had 100 houses in 21. And you're forecasting $100,000 worth of revenue in 21. If you're going to forecast 125 houses in 22, you'd expect that number to be around 120 grand, not not yeah. 60. And I've asked them to find their cut their spreadsheet for me that's referenced here. Mm -hmm. So, and they found that because this was prepared by Stephanie. Yeah, because it looks like inspections, and I assume inspections is probably a part of that permitting process, but I don't know for sure. So that one may have the same behavioral quirk. Yeah, let me follow up on it. Okay. <clears throat> the computer software stuff, that is part of realigning where things were. Um, just as an FYI, as this comes out, you guys are going to see more of that in software maintenance and not software because it is the continuation of services that we've already got. Mm -hmm. It's just renewing those monthly yeah. subscriptions and stuff. Yeah, you buy you buy so. the product and you typically get to pay 20% a year of whatever the purchase price was for your maintenance agreement. Yeah, so we're trying to do some of this cleanup. So. Mm -hmm. Non-cash went down. Just one curiosity yeah. climate in May. It's just maybe a typo or whatever, but on uniforms and accessories, it talks about body cams. Do animal control carry body cam? Not that I know of. Only the police did. Anyway, that just may be a carryover or something? Or? He may have had that as a carryover, <laughs> yeah. 
had that on his on, on his because they don't have department for, one. It makes sense, but either, either okay. that or the ACC meetings are getting a little bit interesting as well. <laughs> you need a body cam on the inspector. Yeah. We'll go back and double check that one. That may have been a carryover from police. Mm -hmm. uh, that's possible. Because. I don't know. The employee count. It's makes too me small. Question. It's too small a number for body cameras. I remember the. I remember the number yeah. was out there for body cameras. It was, it was big. So. Yeah. Sometimes you copy and paste something and forget to go in and clean up. And I just have it all. Open. Never, never, never happened to me before. All right. So the other big difference you're going to see is in your contracts. Mm -hmm. It's actually gone down from budget. That's because they switched to Securitas from Allied Barton, and it, it's been cheaper. Cool. So that's reflected there. It's not going to be a fair question, but Gates in general, is there somebody somewhere who either has already gotten the tasking or is probably going to get the tasking to figure out what to do with manned and unmanned gates going forward? They've been working on it, okay. trying to come up with some solutions, yeah. looking at different date software. And, and yeah, because I know, because from what I understand, the gate, the, the existing <laughs> gates work and they work for a number of years, but they were kind of cobbled together with off-the-shelf stuff, and most of that stuff's 15 years old, so it's end of life and it's not available. And that couple, a retrofit in the gates coupled with... But that plays into the rest of... If it's updated every now and then, it's going to age out and be a problem. Yeah, well, and I think a lot of it, too, is just some of the mechanical stuff that's down there. The links, the data links and the, uh, and the, and the mechanical links are starting to break down. And, and then if you're looking at recapitalizing those gates, is there something we can do at the entrances to help, re, you know, do something to perhaps reduce the human resource footprint at the gates and reduce our cost? They are looking into the different aspects and different options. Already a hundred thousand dollars cheaper than last time. So, pardon me. It's already a hundred thousand dollars cheaper than last time. Yep, so. I got you. Now, as far as the actual gates deal. themselves and and the hardware and the software, it does come into. It's not just replace the gates. But their software because their software is obsolete you got to understand that that software talks to this server this oh, yeah. software this yeah. server is four versions behind so oh, yeah. you're gonna have to go through four iterations mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to build it up just in order yeah. to be able to place what's talking over here to yeah. the gates yeah and you want to you want to make paul's eyes cross talk to him about porting the database and watch him his eyes roll back in his head because that'll drive him crazy <laughs> So. Nobody, nobody ever remembers the cost of porting the data, porting your legacy data. But we are looking into what our options are. Um, as far as capital goes, there. Come over a little bit. Gate guard house, nine thousand um, dollars. The east gate is needed a new roof. It was in the building. Maintenance mm -hmm. schedule is high. Yep. Um, along with these other two items, the goose pond gate upgrade, yeah. and then the animal control incinerator is needing replaced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions regarding P and I compliance, animal control? <coughs> so marketing and discovery. Excuse me. They've got discovery package income in here in the realtor partner program. Um, wages, they have dropped a little bit, not a lot. Um, one of your big changes here is printed forms. Uh, the Advocate magazine that they're going to print again this, this next year um, due to demand. The brochures, the folder maps, banner signage, and all of that. Um, is being pulled in here. It was under advertising before, um, and so they've just allocated it to a different yeah. expense type. Other than the Advocate magazine, most of that sounds like just the periodic refresh that you have to do as your banners and your signage wear out, get sun faded, all that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, some big events going on, and they're, they're printing 
something for that. that mm-hmm. That's where it's all from. Um, let's see. Contracts. Oh. So this one. Yeah, it's about the same as it was in 21. And that's the sales agency contract. Um, and then a, there's a little bit of a buffer for the freelance design added mm-hmm. into it. So in line with where we were there. Mm-hmm. The postage is up. That's partially because it was kind of split, I think. Um, no, different department. I'm sorry. I told you I got too many things rolled through my head. This one is less because they didn't mail the advocate and stuff last right. year. So mm-hmm. there's just some expense yeah. that goes with that. Yeah. Here is the other big change, and that is yeah. for advertising. They are asking to put an extra $100,000 over last year into the advertising with sales agency. Because currently, right now, they pretty much do heavy traffic for about four months out of the year, and they're wanting to be able to to emphasize um, spreading that out a little bit longer, and then maybe some high concentrated areas and stuff. They've got the their description over here for you guys, and how much each thing is costing us between the Village Voice and the radio and and all that. How do we measure success? For that. Great question. So they put together a whole um, month end recap that shows all their foot traffic, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's coming in and, and where it's coming from, kind of where they're getting a big bang for their buck, so to speak, mm-hmm. versus, versus not, and along with trying to track a lot of the stuff for the discovery packages that might tie into it. Mm-hmm. So. So, they, so they've got some kind of numerical trace that takes you from suspects to prospects to mm-hmm. deals. Yeah, that's where I was headed. It's, it's fine to track the traffic, but how does that convert to dollars? Mm-hmm. How do you measure that? Yeah. Yeah. So you said this is produced monthly? Yeah, they've just started um, putting that together a few months ago, I believe. Okay. And who's been reviewing it? Who sees it? Paul Sage and, and them are the ones that pull it together and distribute it. I, um, I don't know if sales agency puts part of it together and, and forwards it on to them or what. I'm, I'm not yeah. 100% sure. Because ultimately they are asking, yeah. not for 100000 I, I throw the 40000 in there also too, so I look at that as 140000 yeah. mm-hmm. uh, so Can I, we go back to the really the top? Um, for, there we go. Um, the real estate partnership program, the uh-huh. uh, nineteen thousand two hundred. So that is unchanged. So the the fee for participation on a per change. seat basis is is the same. Okay. Uh, my first reaction is, ah, oh, geez, we're raising everything else five point eight percent. Why can't we raise that five point eight? I I realize that there's some strategy about. You know, um, keeping on the good side, but just long term, is that how we're viewing it? Just never raising the fees. No. I wouldn't set that in, that statement in stone. No. Well, no, I wouldn't it's, either. But it, the question is, do you do we have a long term view about them fees? So, I mean, we're not going to answer that question today. But I just, when I look at that, that's, well, I think it's that's a, my knee-jerk reaction. It's a combination of strategies that they're needing to work towards. Um, and you've got the lot strategy that needs to come into play. You've got the tourism side of it all that needs to come into play, along with the realtor program. And I think all of those pieces need to speak to each other. So mm-hmm. there needs to be something that they come up with that covers the whole spectrum. Right. So I, I do think it will be reviewed at some point right now. It's only just over a year um, of them actually doing this program. Yeah. And I know that there's been some back and forth on it. I was just going to say, my, my input is, I understand what you're saying, but I think at this juncture in time asking for another hundred and forty thousand dollars in marketing with only one year experience without the metrics behind it doesn't make a lot of sense to me i'm sorry um i think 
you, you got to build a little bit more history on that. And while we deal with some of the other more pressing needs uh, of the village, I'm not saying we cut them. I didn't say that. But I am saying, I don't know, that increasing at this juncture doesn't make sense to me. I, I was inclined, I was kind of going down the same road you were. The not necessarily not necessarily negative about the concept but it's kind of the data's got to kind of demonstrate that there's investment there to be had you know i mean there are certain things we've done this year that have been highly successful i mean the real estate partner program has clearly been very successful we've sold we sold more poa lots in the last year than we've probably sold in the previous decade <laughs> you know so it, so it's undoubtedly a success some of the other marketing approaches don't know enough to know whether it's good, bad, or indifferent at this point. Well, and he, he's not here to speak to it, and so I'm not going to try to put words in mm -hmm. anybody's mouth. You know, we went through this. Um, the other parties were in favor of it, so mm -hmm. we've left it here. It, it, it's not something I'm tied to. I think it's, it's something to be considered. Um, like, that being said, I think there's still some stuff that needs needs a little bit more of that research, yeah. figuring out what what the return is. And I, I mean, I know that they're able to see, okay, we went from having 683 visitors on our website and, and viewing our Explore the Village page to 15,000. And so, mm -hmm. you know, there, there are those measures that they're able to, yeah. to get. Mm -hmm. As far as what's really converting over, you know, I don't have the answer on that. Um, I, again, I'm not against marketing, and I think they're doing, you know, we need to continue to do that, stuff like that. I just don't know that now's the time to in increase when we already know there's already a kind of a demand to come here anyway, so, <clears throat> and we got other needs. That may be a big sell. Yeah. The hard thing to sell, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been looking for, where, where's the cost of correcting the whip or updating the website there are some problems in the website do we know yet who's going to fix those um i think that's all based upon the totally conversion that they've been trying to work on for all year so the, they waived the cost of the conversion if we switch the credit cards so they've switched the credit cards and they still haven't got the conversion of the website completely Okay, I guess I'm behind it's this on, year. on who they is. But totally. Totally. Okay. Working with IT. Yeah. It's a data port problem. Data data's but, not coming data's not coming across clean and so it's train wrecking on the other side, it gets into the other app. Well I think part of the other part of it is you had the marketing department take upon themselves and redo the website. Mm -hmm. Not the portal no members portal but the mm -hmm. website mm -hmm. but then you have IT that's in charge of the other side and there was a disconnect mm -hmm. so trying to bring those pieces yes. back together in unison to work yeah. towards the solution yeah yeah it's real easy to get data disconnects and data validation errors and things like that so. um, let's see so that was their big piece there However y'all want to take it. I didn't have a stance. And then the membership dues and periodicals gone up, and that's because they missed $8,000 of the economic development um, for the 2021 budget. And that's why that increased for the most part. Well, what does that actually mean in lay terms? It's... The Saline County study that they do, and I think the GAC and them use that study to go and petition to be able to get different grant money and oh, stuff like that. Oh, that's, that's that annual community update. I can't economic remember. Economic development. Yeah, so this is what, with the state of Arkansas, yeah. University of Arkansas, yes. who does yeah. the, yes. what, what is our yeah. benefit to the local community mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. study. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Along with... And they didn't get it done last year. They it was not in the budget last year. They did it. They did it, and they had to take it out of hide because yeah. it didn't show up as a budget line. The bill popped in. And so that's why you see budget difference. Yeah. 
Uh, and then the rest of the items is the... But it's still higher than the 2021 budget by almost double. 2021's budget was missing that. Oh, that's... It was missing the $8,000. So, so all the Chamber of Commerce fees were in there. That was the 8000 that was budgeted. What was missed was the Economic Commission report bill. They got half of it and missed half of it. Yeah. So what they've got in there is the Hot Springs Village, Hot Springs, and Benton Chamber of Commerce membership fees, the Hot Springs Metro plan for five thousand, and the Saline County Economic Development Commission for eight thousand missed budget in twenty twenty one. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you had eight thousand dollars. You were missing yeah. eight. That's where your sixteen is now. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have an outstanding bill for $8,000? No, we paid it. We just didn't budget for it. They approved that at the end of the year to use the yeah. We're close to the end of the year. Yeah. It was an unbudgeted expense. Yeah. But why is it carrying yeah. over in 2022 then? It's if we every, paid for it this year. It's, I think, it's every year. Okay. I think it's an annual update, if I remember correctly. Might well, wouldn't, uh, I don't think so because they don't do it. If you're saying you've got the bill and you paid for it, is it not an expense up there somewhere? And, and that economic impact, if we're if this is what we're talking about, the economic impact, they don't do it every year. They do it every several years or whatever, every five yeah. years. Five okay. years. Five years. If it's five, if it's I went five to the GAC years, when they talked about this and got, okay. it, got the input. We need to do one. We haven't done one for five years, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know that this... So let me double check with that department and find out because I don't know the answer to that. Okay. <clears throat> and no, it's not that it was missed from this year. It's paid in 2020. Ah. To answer your question. Ah. It was paid in 2020. It could have hit another department. I, I remember hit. that discussion with the GAC happening mm -hmm. in beginning of the year here very very early last year late, and late and last year early the board and got i think we got money from my understanding yeah. and so oh, it just seems like it's a it's a paid for bill mm -hmm. not to be carried over to this year well if it's if it's a five-year update if, if it only happens if, it, if it's not an annual pay it's if not. it's a if it's an incremental pay then it's already been paid and it won't come due again for well a couple we have years. to ask them again yeah. in five years or whatever yeah. Yeah, let me go to that department and ask for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Please Good. search. Anything else with CD? One more. That was it. Police? Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm in on this tab. So we will start with police. We didn't budget for donations and, and all of that. It's minimal. We'll just see what comes in. Revenue, or I'm sorry, um, salaries. There was the increase that we just put into place, um, along with an additional increase that will take place first of the year. So that's why they have a higher increase there. It's not a change in headcount. Um, mm -hmm. Going down the list here, as I said, computer software and all of that is being worked on at this at the moment. It looks like this one they've got 14 PC replacements and five new tough bugs in there. Um, see, it's a pretty good oil. price if you are replacing 19 pieces of gear. Huh? That's a good price if you're replacing 19 pieces of gear. Well, that's. Computers. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. Oh, I thought you meant like body gear. <laughs> no, 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 no. Tough books are, tough books are pretty yeah. pricey items still. Um, let's see. The maintenance of auto and trucks. 
looks like that still needs to be adjusted, so that should end up going down. Uh, that's one of those allocation accounts. Uh, let's see. Telephone getting lined out. Insurance. That's just a, a general. So nothing else really out of whack there. Um, your computer stuff is, is your biggest impact to your 105000 increase. Capital-wise, uh, this is the mobile PTS software and equipment, and that is for the, the body cams and, and all that that goes along with it. And then the two new police vehicles, because they have the three-year rotation on them all. And then the police department server needs to replace it six years old and, and need to be redone. So that is all the capital for PD-10. Any questions on police? Yeah. Can we go back to wages? I, okay. Number one, really big increase. Um, number two, yeah. the, what's the increase in headcount in there? There's not. No. Oh, there's not? Holy smokes. Well, you were what, $7, Seven an hour dollars under, underpaid? For an hour underpaid, so yeah. they're going to try and We've make up some of that. We've bumped so. them up $2.75 or $2.50 as of right now, and then it'll be another dollar from the first of the year. Okay. Um, so what's the staff level? level? 20, low the, 20s. The, the, the it, it's in the division level. summary chart. You have 30 police force. 30? 30. Between sergeants and mm -hmm. officers and yeah. dispatch and all that. Yeah. Yeah, but one of the, one of the things we found on Frat F's police and fire department were both underpaid compared to the surrounding areas yeah. by about seven bucks an hour. Which so they, I'm just and they can't, you, can't a, talk, yeah. you can't get people. Yeah, if there's a way to just validate the uh, plan over plan uh, increase of 29%. Well, you also got to realize, even though it's a two dollar and fifty cent or two dollar seventy five cent an hour increase, yeah, it's, a good chunk of their hours are overtime yeah, hours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, and the other and the other part of it is you're changing their base, they're, you're changing their base pay, which means your other contributions are going up. Things like retirement fund and all that are made. I'm, I'm just looking at so wages. You don't have a choice. Yeah, everything else gets driven off of wages. I can't. Uh, is the column M total? Is that 825 on wages? On the I'm variance sorry, from total, forecast? Yeah. Is that 825? Yeah, let's just make sure that that was updated, yeah. yeah. So the actual wage, uh, the budget in 2021 was a million oh fourteen. The budget in 22 is 1.3. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So going up, what? Uh, Two hundred and eighty something thousand dollars, yeah, which makes about sense. Huh? That, that's, that's reasonable. That makes about sense yeah. based on about four dollar, three to four dollar okay. increase mm -hmm. over those thirty policemen. Realizing mm -hmm. they're all in different. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, I that's, mean, yeah. Yeah. that's I mean, right we, on mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah they, they they were <laughs> essentially not all of them. There's a twenty four hour coverage. Yeah, not yeah. all of them, but yeah. Okay, I was probably just more curious about. 21 forecast being a couple hundred thousand down. They've been short, understaffed. Short, 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 short. Yeah. They're that short of down. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're supposed. They were supposed to have on a normal day, on a on a good day, mm -hmm. you have two patrol officers and a sergeant on the street. Most days around here in the last year, you're lucky to have two officers on the street. The sergeant's got to be one of the guys on the street because there's nobody else out there because yeah, they're, they're they've been understaffed dramatically. I would say a safe bet is they've been running between fifty and seventy five percent capacity. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. reasonable. Yeah, I'm just, just yeah trying to see that difference yeah. there, five hundred thousand. Right, and uh, hopefully by paying them a little bit more, we can actually yeah. retain them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that still no leaves about us about that. fifty cents under the the competitor and. Down the road. Too. Yeah, I think it's I think it's further than that still, but they're seven dollars. But it but at least it gets you at least it gets you closer, because what's happening now is you're tending to get young ladies and gentlemen right out of right out of police you know whatever police training school you've got they spend a year year and a half with us get a couple certifications and then they bail and about the time they get to understand the community they bail out. Mm -hmm. 
they go they go chasing six or seven dollars an hour, not surprisingly. So. Yep. All right. So PD thirty, um, that's the police training center. So it just has operating expenses, uh, maintenance of building, electricity, so forth. I don't I don't have any questions about the budget line, but I have a fundamental question about the facility itself. We get nine hundred dollars and we spend nineteen thousand dollars. What are we getting for our nineteen thousand dollars? Well, they do their own training and then they also bring in local community people or local people around the, the around the area to use the same facility. I understand citizens why they're doing it. I've never understood why we just don't use one of our other facilities. Yeah. That, I mean, if it's, that if it's PR, we know are underutilized yeah. and quit using this facility and bulldoze the thing. But anyway, that yeah, was, I'm, that's, that's I'm, my. I'm kind of I'm kind of where you are. I, I mean, if it's PR, if it's PR, I get it. But there's no, there's certainly no revenue coming from it, and I'm if, if nothing else, if you close the building, you reduce your you reduce your costs to some degree, but you know, quite honestly, <clears throat> bulldozing it down is probably not a bad idea if you can't figure out what to do with the stupid thing. Yeah, if we were using all of our other facilities, you know, 100% and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and there's not availability of, of yeah. resources, I understand they're going to want to have something that they can count mm -hmm. on, but True. I mean, given the fact that we can schedule and well, stuff, I mean, I mean, you're, you're I mean right. what, what's going on? What's going this on? This is a broader the Hot Springs Village. Uh, Thing that needs to be addressed but well with what's going on at the Coronado Community Center right now I mean if they need it if they need to take a room and dedicate it for for police training I don't think that'd be a problem no nope. no nope. I wondering. don't have the answer I would say we need no to. I mean we're we're picking on you and, and it's not fair but I mean that one that's that's one that really does stick up it's like you know it's vacant 95 percent of the time I get it yeah <laughs> I've often wondered if they dug up the fuel tanks before the POA bought it. They did not. No, they're still there. We still pay permits they to need. get them. It's a hazard weight. Well, they they taking time tanks. bomb. Well, <laughs> it, it's a nightmare. To, you, you can't crack them open. Mm -hmm. you, you're on the hook to fix them then. It's It could be very expensive. So in the meantime, we just pay the, the fee, the inspection fee. Mm-hmm. Be this is for something you. for the board from my standpoint, Gary, that you just, you know, oh, I know. as a community writ large, better utilization of our assets, reduce our overhead. Not about this has to be a strategic discussion yeah. uh, probably going something. forward and something to, yeah. to push on. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just one less building in general you got to yeah. keep up. Just one less roof, one less HVAC, one less, yep. I mean, I can, we can yep. go on and on. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we're we're throwing rocks at Karina, and no, she's not the not rock her. catcher here. I find uh, the answer. I give it to you. I just don't. No, know no, 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 no. <laughs> you, you, we're not asking you. The, some of the things we ask, we think That's, did did the department head tell you why? And so yeah. yeah. That's, you get all the questions. Yeah, that's just that's just to carry back for Ricky. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's <laughs> like, what are we what are we getting for this? And I think that this isn't the first time that question has been raised. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. not new. That's not that's okay. Okay. So, perhaps a kinder, gentler version of the same questions are uh, I remember the original proposal, and part of the original proposal was renting out this facility using it not only for training for our police, but for yep. um, mm -hmm. you know, um, other um, local you police know, local forces. Local Jesseville, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and then even renting it out to local people mm -hmm. for training. I mean, the, there was a monetization strategy. Oh, yeah. It just looks to me like nobody's pushing or executing the monetization. It didn't work. <clears throat> Bottom line is it didn't work. You got it. You work. got. Well, yeah, you yeah. got you got so, fifty thousand yeah, square foot of facility at Coronado Center. You can't right. rent. So what do you think? Why do you think you're going to rent that? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just we. At some point, we need to mm -hmm. yeah, reevaluate. Yeah. And maybe, yeah. maybe make a, a change. Mm -hmm. And twenty two might be a good year to execute it. Any other questions regarding? <laughs> no. No. Sorry, animal. 
We all, we all got our arms limber throwing rocks at that one, sorry. So, fire, they have the same. Um, so, that, just real quick, the animal control one, that one it's, it's moved, moved, right? So, that one's not relevant here. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And that, that revenue tab, that's not applicable yeah. either. Yeah. Um, fire department. Yes. So, we have adjusted their salaries some as well they did not get the adjustment now but we did build it in for for next year mm -hmm. a little bit higher than the average so that's where you see that increase here mm -hmm. uh, and and i would expect both in police and fire would not be the least bit surprised to see continued salary adjustments for 23 and maybe 24 before we get them to a position where they're competitive we're relatively competitive and honestly i think we're going to have that in different areas across the organization mm -hmm. and the fact is we, we can't fix everything today no yeah you know whether no. you have the people or the equipment no. and and it's a yeah. duo that we need to be working towards for the next several years yeah, yeah. you got to have the you know you got to have the financial wherewithal to be able to do all the right things that you need to do mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. a couple of years coming and you need the people to do it because otherwise you're just going to have a bunch of stuff and also Nobody true. to put in place. Also true. Um, yeah, they look real, real pretty sitting in the parking lot, but nobody's driving them around. Mm -hmm. So those will be gradual things that mm -hmm. we try to address. Um, question about overtime. Uh, overtime is like 40% of wages. Yep. I just assume that's normal for, for a fire department. It is. I mean, it's just really too. high, but that's normal. It's under, under man, right? Huh? Under man, right? Under man? Mm-hmm. They're not fully manned, right? The police, the fire department, just um, like the police department. No, I believe they're not. They don't have the same staffing issues. Okay. Um, their overtime is so high because of their schedule. I believe it's a 28 on, 28 off, something like that. So it's okay. built in yeah. to have 380 or hours or some something like that. I don't remember. That's I have to look. Yeah. But yeah, it's like 20, usually it's 24 on, 48 off, something like that. Something. So you've got to, but, but it's 24 on, so you're working 24 hours through, so you've got big OT hits. Yes, and, and they have looked at, okay, what if you hired enough police or firemen so you didn't have overtime? Mm -hmm. But the, all they had a head count there, it is way more than what it is yep. to yep. keep it the yep. way it is. Yep. Yeah, you're so, that's the way every police department or every fire department works. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All their expenses are pretty much in line. They've got a bigger amount for the non-cap equipment. They've gone from 3,521 to 10,022. Um, so they've that's zero turn mowers. <laughs> Getting back to mowers again. Yeah, right? and that's when I've, I've already got a question in on that one. So Thank you. It, prior to your question. <laughs> But so. so this goes to, you know, all these departments doing their own thing. Yeah. And, and in reality, what is the macro Hot Springs Village plan to keep our well, common I mean, property facilities, landscaping around my firehouse or police department or Coronado Center or, or front gate? Why aren't we don't have it all bundled together they, and save some money? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not just that. It's not just bundled together. It's who's responsible for executing it. That's yeah. True. So yeah. when I saw this, I did go and yeah. and start to talk to a couple of the departments trying to figure it out. So yeah. this part is still under review. Yeah. Well, with all the facilities we have, it's it's really tough to map out who's who's got the dot for doing what well, where. And what they told me is that they have always went and mowed their own areas around both fire stations because grounds maintenance doesn't have the time and, and the people to get out there to do it so they've had to do it themselves mm -hmm. which is what the recreation guy said and which is what the mm -hmm. yeah. golf department says yeah. and all that kind of stuff so yeah so. but that and but that's cool but i'd rather i'd rather see the firemen be firemen and not be yard maintenance mm -hmm. guys because they get paid really well to cut grass <laughs> so it, like i said we're st we're looking into it and it comes back to to both sides of that issue it just help if I read the comment before I read off the line. No, that's good. Um, no, that's a good comment. That's a good catch there. Yeah. Let's see. Your 
equipment is going up a little bit, but they're still working on doing that allocation, so, and it's kind of where they've been. I know they've had a lot of their fire trucks and stuff in the shop more this year. Um, one, for example, has been there for, I want to say it's like two and a half months already, and they still haven't gotten it back. So, they're, the costs are going up. Um, to maintain all this. Uh, one of the one of the fire trucks that I think is in the fleet queue to repair this year was a 1996 mm -hmm. model. So I can't imagine why it's spending a little time. That's it, right there. 1996 International Harvester. Uh, right there. Uh, yeah. Down a little bit more under capital. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything else here's in line. Mm -hmm. That is the only capital that they've got. Mm -hmm. um, the planned replacement for the fire engine. Yep. What is interest expense in this context here? Oh, because they still have loans on the other fire trucks, I believe. And they have what? Okay. I believe there's still an existing loan um, on the old fire truck, one of them. Okay. That would be what's applicable there. I'm just trying to figure out why mm -hmm. it went. Uh, okay, never mind. I looked at the wrong category. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. It did go up, though, which, which is not normally to go up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not pay out more, it should go down, right? Mm -hmm. So, shouldn't it be less than that? <clears throat> Probably. Okay. Like I said, I still have to go through all these little ones that they've all tried to fill in on their own. Mm hmm. And, they look and like, yeah, they, they look like they're kind of wandering around. I know. I would yeah. think it would be a little, you know. If it's alone, it should my, be. My, my, car payment didn't, my car payment didn't vary year over year. Like I said, I, okay. that's the balance sheet side. I've got them pulling all that information for me to do my 12-month amortization, so I'm going to go in and true these up. I yeah. still need to go through and look at all the telephone stuff, look at all the insurance stuff. Okay. So. Yeah. Got it. Uh, this is Act 833. We do not budget for it. We do track it, um, but you guys don't need to worry about the budget side of it. This is the funds that fire department receives from Garland and Saline County. Ah, okay. Thank you. And then they, it's got its own account, and that's where they can process certain types of expenses okay. out of it. Kind of good. And then this is the ambulance contract. Would you mind going back to that screen? So, okay. Does the looks like we give fifty thousand dollars a year from Garland? Yeah. I was going to ask: Does the excess just go into the operating fund, or do they? Did this always stay separate? It, it the funds go into the Act Eight Thirty Three account, mm -hmm. and, and it is it is never merged with. They're for okay, specific does. items, right? Is that what it is? Um, I think they've got some flexibility as far as mm -hmm. what they can do, but yes, it's if they've got to go out and buy some, some new safety equipment. PPE or something. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 I'm wondering about the maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Who, where There's do? nothing budgeted. Okay. I know, but what they're actually spending. Oh. Okay. It may have been some stuff that they had with a fire truck or something. Uh, okay. I want to say that there is one piece of equipment that they bought with these funds. Not a fire truck, but an actual pickup truck. Mm -hmm. Or no, I think it's a van. I don't know. It's one of those. Mm -hmm. But it would be related to something like that. Oh. They only charge specific items. It's a, like I said, they send those in a totally different way to accounting for us to even record them. Yeah. Or um, it could, it we'd could have to be, go back and look. Yeah, or it could be pieces of equipment that are actually carried on the truck. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Something like for a, that truck that you know, like they'll they'll put smoke fans and on, mm -hmm. on a truck if you if after a fire they'll put fans in your doorways and all of that to blow the excess smoke out and those kinds of things are all pourable pieces. Yeah, it's not a lot of money, but when the brakes lock up on a mm -hmm. fire truck, it makes you wonder if we're doing maintenance, what happened? Well, all that would fall in over here. That all of that stuff is this maintenance. Yeah which is higher. The maintenance uh, on this 20, 833 is probably local mandate uh, mm -hmm. for a certain kind of you know, light or something like that that has to be installed, so they would have to install it and use this money. Yeah. 
where you've got, you, you wouldn't be paying for oil changes and transmission services on the fire truck, but if you've got a, you know, if you've got some kind of a uh, hose, not like a fixed nozzle hose or something like that on the truck, and you've got to, you've got to refresh the bracketing on it and things like that to make sure that the, or you got to refresh the hose on it, <clears throat> stuff like that is probably what it pays for. I'd have to go back and, and actually pull those invoices to tell you exactly what it was, yeah. but it, it would have been tied with something that is covered under yeah. what they'd already previously bought with the A33 funds. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't be wouldn't be tied to the to the chassis of the vehicle. It'd be tied to all of the all of the fire unique equipment Correct. that's on the back of the truck. Alright, so F200 is our ambulance contract. Um, Pretty much just like this year, you got your income coming in, um, the maintenance of the building, electricity, the contract itself. Uh, they do have some flooring to replace at the Los Lagos ambulance, and that's their only capital item. It looks like the ambulance contract. I, I don't want to use the phrase profitable because it's not well. It varies. It's all over the place. Because it was a little under for a while, and now it's looking like it might be the income might actually be catching up. So over the over the entire period, it looks like it's pretty much break even. Not doing the math. But. Well, you come out seventy three ahead, so eighty three if you take out capital. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we went up for the new rooftops, mm -hmm. beams. Build that service fee. So, any other questions regarding safety? No. Okay. Nope. Thank you. I had a follow up. I just want to follow up on one of the questions we brought up last week. Uh, Noticed in the golf department, it looked like some of the salaries in the golf department were even the staffing levels weren't changing, but the salary levels were. Yeah, it was up. all messed up. Okay, so so it was just a. There was yeah, there were several on the file that I received that had part time at twenty eighty hours. Okay. Which is full time hours. Okay. So, I had to get all that cleaned up, and we drastically went down on. It yeah, on I would. I, I would have expected there was. Probably two hundred and fifty or three hundred thousand dollars worth of compensation reduction resulting from that. Maybe a little more than that. A little more than that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, in fact, if you guys want. Here's where I'm looking right now. Minus my few cleanup stuff mm -hmm. everywhere mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. Got it. I got it. I've still got roughly $83,000 in there, but once I get IT and and maintenance of auto and stuff cleared up, I'm going to be running really You're going right, to be right on the edge. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there will probably be one or two other things I need to go in and, and remove still. Mm -hmm. but okay. um, None of this stuff has changed. It's all what we looked at the other day. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as revenue, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, compensation. Let's see if I can make this just a hair smaller. Can you guys still see? Or is that too small? I'm good. But I'm sitting up front. <laughs> Alright, so once I got it all done, we're looking at 19,067,000 mm -hmm. in here. And I believe what I had the other day was 20-something. Yeah. So, overall... Um, it's a hundred nine thousand dollar budget difference mm -hmm. year over year, and what I did over here, so you guys can see. Let I'm going to just hide one of these for the moment, just so I can get it all on one screen. And I'll hide this one. All right, so admin is going up by twenty one point eight percent. That is due to new position, restructuring one from CD into here, and those taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, two new positions. Mm -hmm. Innovation has gone down because we've moved the one out. Mm -hmm. 
public safety, you're seeing a little bit more of an increase there, but that's because it's we salaries said we were going to. Yep. Yeah. Police and fire salaries. Yeah. Public works is up 9.8 percent. There are some new headcount yeah. there. So Quite a, mostly staffing. There's three or four or five positions, something yes. like that, and they got added. I yeah. think there's four. There are four under the public utility side and or public work side and two three under public utility, utility side. Yeah. Okay. So the big um, that we've already put in. So you can see public utilities is, has gone up seventeen percent. Um, because of those added added people. Okay. Food and beverage is down ninety five percent. Yeah. And then golf is sitting at 1.8 percent increase okay well that's way better than it was it yes was, it was up a million salaries were up a million dollars you know yeah because they have the majority of our part-time people yeah and so while they had most of the formula correct uh -huh. I don't, i'm not sure where it got off but i had probably 20 or 30 people overall oh, yeah. with four times as many hours as they should have yeah been. yeah that's a, i'm i'm glad it was that easy <laughs> um and then recreation is down 13.1%. Mm -hmm. So overall, you're looking at a 0.6%. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Now, this is with me going in. We'd originally said grades one through four. All, all group levels get the 3% cost of living. Mm -hmm. Levels one through four get 1.5% merit. Mm -hmm. Levels five mm -hmm. and above get 2% merit unless they've been here less than a year. If they've been here less than a year, then it is one and a half percent merit. So that's where your four and a half average came mm -hmm. in was up to five. Okay. The, with the way we were looking and trying, I picked up most of the pieces I could find off the seven year OM and so forth. I did go back in and I bumped up levels five and above to two percent merit instead of, I'm sorry, two and a half percent merit instead of two. So an extra half a percent there. And part of that thinking is, your levels five through nine, that's your worker bees. Those are the people who are making sure your day-to-day -day stuff is getting done. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that have not been adjusted as every time we've had an, um, a minimum yeah. wage increase take effect. And we need yeah. to keep the separation because what yep. we're running into is now you're getting people who are a level four and they're only making mm -hmm. three cents less than the person who's a level five that's been mm -hmm. here for five years. Yeah. So trying to keep that, so that's why I did, we had a little bit. It literally came out to about seventy, eighty thousand dollars mm -hmm. Without that, my year-over-year -year budget for payroll was only $20,000 difference. Mm -hmm. So, no, just, that makes that makes sense, because what, as the minimum wage bumped, some of the some of the wage bands moved and some of them didn't. At some point, you hit a, you hit a point where they cut off, and so they started to overlap yes. quite a bit. So levels one through four, Two years ago, got a raise, mm -hmm. and and the rest was minimal. Mm -hmm. uh, then last year, levels one through five got it, but level five got a very, very small percent, and mm -hmm. they didn't get anything the year prior. And then your level tens and above for the last two years have not gotten anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm looking at, like I said, still have some of that cleanup to do, so y'all mm -hmm. bear with me. Yeah. Um, but we've gotten it pretty close. Yeah. It's, looking, it's looking really good. So back to over here, like I said, that's, that yeah. still leaves this amount in utilities to carry over, mm -hmm. 550000 probably going to be about 500000 because with them adding two new people to Larry's department, they're going to need a truck. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to go out and run a separate crew, mm -hmm. so have them adding that yeah, in. They're going to need they're going to need truck and equipment in the truck. So yeah. Yeah, and I already added them a backhoe in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, I did that after you guys reviewed public utilities. Yeah. I added the backhoe. And it it looks like maybe you also added some dollars into the into the capital expenditures because if I remember right, last week it was like eight million, just a hair over eight million. Now it's like eight five. Yep. Yes. That, that, and that's that, where win, I said, that windfall in the salaries was looks like it got expended. That's where I went back through the seven year O and M and picked mm -hmm. up the stuff everybody else had missed that was a high cool. twenty twenty two. Cool. Added the other truck for utilities mm -hmm. and and that. So mm -hmm. Okay. Um, cool. 
that kind of helps as far as where we're looking there. Mm -hmm. So we one, only have we only have one department to look at Wednesday. Three departments, but one division. One division. Excuse me. There's one question. I think it was brought up a couple of meetings ago, but um, the budget you're preparing, this budget up here for compensation, assumes full staffing on Jan one. So I went through with golf, and there's there was three or four positions. Um, that they probably would not fill until springtime, and then we adjusted those out. Mm -hmm. However, the rest, they are actually in need and would don't want to limit themselves and like to be able to fill them as quickly as possible. Okay. So we left those. Um, and I did adjust the hours for those part-time positions too, because I know, for example, my part-time people, they work more than a golf part-time person. So while 546 was used across the average, if we knew that they actually are getting more hours too. I did make those adjustments. So mine are in there like 900 hours, mm -hmm. uh, some of those things, but. Okay, okay. So, thank you. I mean, this is, so the other tables we need to look at, will we see them on Wednesday or will we get a chance to see them before? I know it's Monday at four o'clock. <laughs> well, um, <coughs> I'm hoping we'll get it finished. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't right. mean to make a nope, joke with that curious. question. <laughs> I'm going to see that as quickly as I can. No, okay. We'll see you Wednesday. Okay. That question started two trains leave the station. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I can you. show you what I've got. It's really only lacking IT being finished in it. Um, I've already like, got admin and HR in it. So. Okay. Sounds like you're still trying to wrestle IT to the ground, so we probably ought to let you finish that. <laughs> well, new new department head and mm -hmm. with allocating being different than what mm -hmm. a lot of not mm -hmm. everybody's used to cost accounting oh yeah you know, know. so trying yeah. to go through that I so i hated allocations yeah okay cool well thank you again thank you and thank the staff for yeah. all the work that they've done this was a much less painful process than i thought it was going to be and that that's a testament to everybody staying focused and Okay. I know there's a lot of cap hurting had to go on behind the scenes to make that happen. So, so we're pretty late in the day. I had one other item on the agenda that I would like to take 10 or 15 minutes and talk about if folks are willing to hang in for a few more minutes, and that was the some of the earmarking policy red lines. Uh, if everybody is willing to stay with us for another 10 or 15. <laughs> So I sent out something, and, and so a little bit a little bit of backstory here, uh, based on the feedback we got at the meeting last week. Took another pass back through the, the couple of draft articles here. Uh, also had a couple of conversations with a couple of folks on the board regarding Ford's potential recommendation of having a third party reviewer essentially look through the, the line items. Uh, I got to say that didn't get a lot of love, you know, out of out of the board members, and I kind of don't blame them. I mean, if I were sitting in their chair, I'd probably feel exactly the same way. Uh, it's more of a, you know, it's not it's not an issue where there's there's been malfeasance or anything like that, or you know, funds being absconded with or anything along those those lines. So there really isn't any absolute need for oversight. Uh, there's be some cost and associated with it. There'd be some time associated with it, and it's just in general, it's not a very popular concept. Now, one of the things that there is going to be a forum tomorrow. I think it's highly likely. In exact exactly what this is going to look like, I don't quite know, but I think it's highly likely that the board will talk about the concept of an earmarking policy. They will probably talk about the kinds of things that are going to be reported and the way some of some of those things are going to be reported in the general sense and basically nothing nothing more than what's laid out here in the special accounting treatment under Article 29. But it's basically just a list of the various items that'll be that'll be focus items 
what the budget line is, what actuals to date are, what ex what has been done year to date, and then what's up next. You know, in the in the the time window, I suspect that will probably be part of their public forum conversation tomorrow in some form or fashion, and the thinking is. Yes, the policy needs to be put into place. The exact wording of the policy is still being finalized. But the real focus for the people that are out driving back and forth up to Soto Boulevard right now is for the board to show them that the money that they're getting from, from fee assessments and fees and all of the other revenue sources is being spent wisely. So it's it's maintaining the roofs, it's adding the water and sewer lines, it's fixing the streets, it's fixing the culverts, it's doing all of this. It's it's the it's the keeping the fleet refreshed so the folks can get into a truck and actually have a fighting chance to get to your house to fix whatever problem you called them about. You know, all all of those kinds of things. So hopefully that will go a ways toward dealing with some of the public perceptions about the uh, the the, the trust of the board and the usage of funds. Uh, so that kind of, kind of with a, a little bit of that background, uh, try to figure out the easiest way to go through this. The, uh, the biggest thing, I, I'll start with Article 2 because that's really the simplest one because that one didn't yeah. mess around with too much. The, uh, There was a suggestion, which I think actually Karina made, which is section one, item D, uh, that basically says as part of the strategy formulation process in the spring, the board should identify the can candidate aspects for the budget for which special accounting treatment is going to be required. And the point, point there being it affects the budget process. You know, if you're going to put special emphasis on certain things, it's going to be going to be places where there's obviously an expectation that budget's going to be expended. So, knowing that before the before the budget process kicks off makes an awful lot of sense. So, thank you, Karina, for for that. Uh, the only other significant thing that changed in here. Uh, was down under section six. I had initially, and this was my bad, I had initially imposed a supermajority vote of the board to change the budget once it was baselined, and that seemed like shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah. So I made some wording adjustments. Where are you? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, section six. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff, section six. My apologies. Section six? Yes. Article 2, Section 6. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> so instead of requiring the entire budget to, re to require a supermajority vote to change, it now says the budget, with the exception of those line items related to areas of special accounting treatment and references you to the special accounting treatment chapter and verse, may be amended by a vote of the Board of Directors. So essentially, the rest of the budget can change. If there's a reallocation of budget lines, the rest of the budget can be changed with a normal, simple majority vote of the board. Of the board. You know, so I'm trying to think of a good example where that might be. Maybe, maybe what we just talked about earlier, a few minutes earlier, where there was a, there was a bill that was, <clears throat> there was a task that was being done, it wasn't budgeted, well, the bill showed up, so now we got to find money to cover it. So, mm -hmm. something like that would not require a supermajority of a, a vote of the board to change. But if it's related to one of the items that has special accounting treatment, like a street street work, culvert work, building maintenance work, something like that, you would have to do it in accordance with Article 29. And I did. I actually did go back and look at the at the organizational structure of whether should it go in chapter one, should it go in chapter nine, what's right now in chapter nine looks to be most of the uh, the investment policy 
uh, kind of articles more than normal day-to-day -day stuff. That said, I'm not hard over whether it goes in chapter one or chapter nine. It's just a matter of changing the chapter number and the and the article number. And so wherever wherever the board decides to put it, I think is my kind of my viewpoint of, of where it resides. So I don't I'm not hard over one way or the other. So the so so let me tap the brakes there. Those were the only major changes I made in Article Two. Uh, other than maybe a couple of typographical corrections. Does anybody think I missed anything? So I only had one comment that I sent to you just the other day, which was in Article 2 of the Budget Policy, you know, Section 1B talks to the seven-year OMT projections. Mm -hmm. um, since this is new, don't we have to say we will do one and then we'll follow this formulation strategy? I'm just, hmm? you know, be what, what, uh, where is the statement that says from this point forward we will always do a seven year O&M projection and maybe even some guidance on when it has to be done and looked at and stuff like that, only just because it's new and if you look around and you go, well, where's that requirement, right? So I think about the staff and everybody else, what's the requirement? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be my only, I mean, you probably could put it right there and we just have to tweak it or something. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think you're right, Jeff. <clears throat> and I don't want to make it overly complex, but at the same time, <clears throat> ideally this forward thinking mm -hmm. survives more than a year or two, because that's what's needed. <laughs> no, I think that's a good point, Jeff, so thank you. Okay. I'll, I took note to self, and I'll see if I can figure out where to fold that in. Okay. Anybody, anything else I missed? So if not, hearing none, moving to Article 29. Uh, let's see. So there were a couple minor red lines in the uh, purpose section. Uh, added the word existing to infrastructure and amenities, you know, in keeping with our philosophy of no new. not adding new until we figure out how we can pay for what we already have. Mm -hmm. uh, that was actually suggested by, by one of the board members. And uh, then I can't remember where this little line came from, but... Uh, the idea here is the property owners need visibility into how the community funds are being expended, and particularly in items that are critical to our long-term infrastructure. So when I went into Section 2, 2B looks like it was dramatically adjusted, and the only thing I really did is I made those bullets. They were they were just a, a, a long, run-on paragraph of with a lot of commas, and all I did is make them bullet points. And those were the high priority areas that were identified uh, as part of the seven year OM forecast. And then let me see, how did I? Not sure I made too many adjustments to section two, Bravo two. concept there being you've already identified the items that are candidates for special accounting treatment you've gone through the budget cycle then once you go through that the budget cycle you're going to review it with the general manager you're going to review it with f and p and have it reviewed and approved by the board and then the other Major item was section three. Not sure exactly. I don't have dates and times on these, so I don't exactly know which items are. I don't think I edited that section in this which last one? pass. Section three uh, <coughs> items, Charlie and Delta. I think those were legacy red lines from, from before.
The only thing I had on that uh, section three, subparagraph Charlie, um, that that ad that's at the very end where it says reference paragraph two B, mm -hmm. says four examples. I don't think they're examples. Yes. Well, as I read this, I realize what I didn't put in here is the board actually specifically identifying which of those things are going to require special accounting treatment. Mm -hmm. Well, it well, gets kind of there. Two. Yeah. Well, the list, the candidate list is there in article in section two. It says that. In Section 3, Charlie, the Board of Directors will confirm the budget line items for which treatment will be required. So I'm not sure I've said that firmly enough. I think you want to make reference in section 2 B 1 that these are the special accounting item the starting special accounting items You've got to have a start point right you want all of these right now <clears throat> Well, I mean, like the golf carts, they're not doing anything next year. I would think you would have went through and outlined where you're really going to have activity versus... Well, each year it's going to change slightly, mm -hmm. right? So it wouldn't be an annual selection then. Well, we need that. <clears throat> well, that's, that's, uh, that's the key is, is that... Each year, you're going to have to report on those items that are high. That's what I'm saying. Is it selected items that are high, or is it this list and it's never changing, even if we have activity or not? Well, that's a good point. Yeah, I think, for example, we're definitely working on golf cart on golf equipment, but we're not working on. We know in that seven-year forecast, we have golf cart. Recapitalization. Well, in 23, right? Yeah, we so know. 20, we, it's only one year yeah. is off, but then the rest of the, and, and then it's yeah. that whole period. But the same thing, like we talked about, lake dredging. Mm -hmm. Once you get done with all lakes, we said metrics based after that. So, yep. <clears throat> yep. Um, and then you got public utility upgrades to water and sewer plants. Certain things will be done, but then other things. Or on the list in the outer years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay either way. I'm just trying to understand what it, the way it's looking, whether it's a, mm -hmm. an evolving list or it's a set list. That's all. I think the reality of it is it'll change over time. You know, and this is this is the dilemma we're getting into because we're we're trying to write a policy document and they. But tend you can't to, change it. Well, they're. <laughs> But you don't. Want, you, you don't. You, you really want to make it very hard to change that list, at least for this period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Twenty-two to twenty-seven. So what if you were to have something that would say every five years this list needs to be reevaluated, and during that five years it's all encompassing pretty much, so that's it would cover. It. I think that was the whole purpose, though, of Section 3, right, which was the review process. If we review the seven-year O&M, mm -hmm. the rolling seven-year O&M every year, mm -hmm. certain things may fall off. It was high priority, and then we decided not high priority. That may happen, mm -hmm. not likely, but it may happen. There are other things that were medium that all of a sudden the vehicle doesn't start anymore, and... There's no replacement, no way to fix it. Now it became a high priority. The real world's going to get in the way, and we're going to have to make those make those adjustments. Um, that's why you do a rolling one, and then you try and be very disciplined about, I'm sorry, you had your chance. 
you didn't put it in there, and you're going to be held held accountable. That's what we're going to do, and you know, make do until we get around to your next review cycle. That's my viewpoint, of course, but I mean, that's what I think the property owners want too. Is that this one? We're not going to we're not going to let you just wander on the road. You're going to follow this road. No, I get all that. I do. And I, just to defend myself. <laughs> it's not you. It's well, not you. I know we added a few items, but I wouldn't have added anything if it wasn't that the funds weren't going to be there because I was already cutting crap left and right. Oh, yeah. So I don't yeah. want you to think that I'm just going to say, oh, no, here's your no. free pass oh, and, no. and so forth. No. But if there's true justification, if your vehicle's broke down, you blew up the motor because you didn't change the oil and now you cracked all your heads, you mm. don't have a choice now. Yep. There are those, I, yeah. but I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Hold their feet to the fire. I mm -hmm. do get it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's what I was just asking. It, this list kind of looks more of an all-encompassing list. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if that was your base point, and maybe you just decided that there's derivatives from it or something, I mean, I don't know. You guys steer this however you want. I'm just rambling. Well, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to. I, I, trying to figure out how to align the varying viewpoints because I, I think you're right that what what's in here and what's in here in 2b1 is basically I use the phrase the list <laughs> you know at least as we know it today you know sub, subject to change well I mean what areas what you do you do not is you have can put an list. asterisk on those items <clears throat> for 22 mm-hmm that are either that included. That are going to be the starting special tracking areas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I use special tracking areas, but special accountability yeah. treatment. Whatever. <clears throat> and we know that that would be, I mean. That's virtually all of them. Uh, There's no, a couple. Would actually <laughs> not have some. The gate upgrades aren't on there. The, uh, the golf carts are golf, on there. The golf carts are not there. What the I bunker rebuilds aren't on there. No. Nope. So you already got you removed at least three or a small four. number of them. Yeah, removed three or four. Yep. Well, and you and the advantage of doing that is now now you've identified your twenty twenty two special accounting treatment. Right. Items. Your starting point, mm -hmm. and then in. In the OMT review in the spring of next year, then we determine are there what changes are going to be made to that, yep. and we say okay. So yep. for 23, yep, these are the areas that we would like green it up. Yep, to look like carefully at. We'll we'll know, for example, that in 23 we're going to have to bring golf cart recapitalization into the equation. Correct. Yeah, you know, but. I don't see anything that's likely to fall off in 23, but there may be some things that fall off 24, 25, 26, you know, depending yeah, on. At, at some point in, in a number of years, mm -hmm. some of those things probably, uh, if you could get them healthy, yeah. Well, like you a, might like, not have to track them as yeah. as uh, well. Like a like a gate a gate upgrade program isn't going to be in twenty three, but it may pop up, for example, in twenty four or twenty five, and then may fall off again right. because you you pop you you put a special emphasis on it because it was a project you had to go do. Once it's done, then you put it back away. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. But at, at the same time, street preservation program. Never going to go away. No. Culvert's never going away. Building maintenance never going to go away. We just need to say that we're going to make sure mm -hmm. any money we collect first goes to those areas, mm -hmm. and then whatever's left over will mm -hmm. deal with the other rest of the mm -hmm. operation. Well, the other why couldn't you just leave this list like it is? It's just and where do you start with the special? I know, but they're going to be each year. <coughs> You're gonna, even though you're not gonna have a golf cart program for 22, mm -hmm. it could just be in there as zero. Mm -hmm. True. Sure. You know, and then when it pops up in 24, 23, whenever it is, mm -hmm. then you put whatever amount. Yeah. 
That's true. Well, yeah. So your budget it's trying lines, to not make that so your too special your special politics. emphasis line is it's the only problem then you get into with the community would be you do a community review and somebody says, well, you said this is a special emphasis item and you didn't give any budget. What do you mean? How can that be? Well, you could <laughs> qualify it by this is also says 20, 2022 mm -hmm. to twenty twenty seven. Mm -hmm. Well, the other, the other thing I'm thinking, and I'm just thinking out loud here, there are a subset of these that we know are going to be ongoing pretty much regardless. And that's the streets, the culverts, the buildings, fleet replenishment, Roadside clearance and view mowing, water and sewer plan upgrades, water and sewer line replacements, and staffing. The rest of these will come and go. Mm -hmm. So maybe we take this, this set of bullet points and we create two sets. We create a baseline set, mm -hmm. which is going to be standard reporting going forward. Mm -hmm. And then we have a set of optional items that we will report on when there's a need for them to be reported on, you know, and that and that would be things like IT upgrades, gate upgrades, lake dredging, you know, because to your point, Jeff, you you're going to invest for a while, and then you want it to be a data-driven program, so it's it's going to come and go over time. Um, golf golf cart, golf equipment is one of those things that's going to come and go, you know the. Uh, Bunker rebuilds are a periodic. Yeah, you know, they're they're gonna they're gonna be a focus item for the year that they're being done or the two years they're being done. But, so maybe we create two lists. We create a we create a man, we create a minimum list, <coughs> or we create a we create a, a subset of these that are going to be reported on pretty much constantly going forward. Then we have an alternate set, and then and then the only thing the board has to do is identify which one of those optional items is actually going to be included in the next right. budget year. Yeah. Right. And that would that would be a fairly easy way to write it and organize it and make it easier for people to understand it and manage it. Mm -hmm. So and it doesn't change the philosophy. You've you've got yeah. you've got required and optional basically mm -hmm. up, up up front and then the board establishes those priorities at the beginning of the year and then they confirm them during the budget review process. Yeah. And then you can't change the budget once once you baseline that budget. Essentially, the way I've written this thing now is the only way you can you can change those those items for which you've identified as special accounting treatments if you declare a compelling need. Something really bad happens. <laughs> right. Well, and just for clarification, here's my dumb bug question. When you're saying that, you're only saying if we were to take funds away from that category, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not the fact of, okay, we've had another culvert breakdown and we're going to need to invest another extra 100000 than above what we had. Fair, fair point. Um, do, you want to, do you want to make it only for reduction or do you want to make it for change? To require, because all you're really doing is requiring a supermajority vote. I mean, because the board has to vote on it anyways. If a culvert goes down and it's an unplanned expense that's $80,000, mm -hmm. they're going to have to vote regardless of, yep. of this policy. Yep, exactly. But I'm just, for clarification of which way are you referring? I was thinking, the way I wrote it, was if you're taking money away. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about, too. I mean, adding money because of something like that, you would expect the board to prioritize that, make that happen. Someplace else is going to take the hit. Reducing below the no, and I get it both the, ways. The, mm -hmm. the level mm -hmm. is what we don't want them to be allowed to do and to put money elsewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I get it. I just didn't know if it was you're going to require a two-thirds majority vote to to go in and put more into a certain category versus. It was intended to be only if you took money away. That said, I need to go back and take a look at these yeah, words the and make sure. Wording there doesn't. I'm not sure the wording exactly says that. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Section 4D. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. It, it's not quite ordered right because it's any place you want to go. See, it's one. Yeah, it's it's hard to get away from this happening. When you're looking at a very large document, and you change paragraph here, mm -hmm. paragraph there. Mm -hmm. Then before long, you get conflicting paragraphs. That may be construed by some people. Mm -hmm. It's to their advantage way of thinking. That applies <laughs> to the entire budget. Right? Yeah. Well, the reason the reason why it's hiding back here, and the, the reason why there's an Easter egg planted back in Article Two on the budget policy, was that now in, in Article Two, Section Six, it says the budget, with the exception of those line items related to areas of special accounting treatment, may be amended by a vote. So you, 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 the board has the ability to change the rest of the budget. Mm -hmm with a simple majority vote, just like they do today. But only in those places where you are, where you have special accounting treatment, do you need a supermajority to make changes. And really the intent is to make reductions in those budget lines. But to be not really knowledgeable, somebody has to look at both of the... Yeah. Well, I think there's the other policy that states as long as it's not a change to the bottom of net income it doesn't have to go through the board yeah and that's still in the that's still that's in the article two budget article policy. Two. yeah if there's no bottom line impact if you're just moving money around but i think that's to your point <coughs> though when you read that and then you come over and you read any budget adjustment will require a super majority yeah that's not good yeah no that's i think you're gonna have to make that a floor mm -hmm. okay no, yep. re no reduction Yep. And then the question I would have, Larry, is, is it D of Section 4, or does it become A of Section 5? Because we just said it's these areas. I don't know. One's compelling need. I got that. Compelling <laughs> need's going to happen. You know, a culvert's going to collapse. We're going to have to fix it. <clears throat> We're gonna have to find money in the budget to go do that. So you're gonna do, you're gonna make that safety or security mm -hmm. repair. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're gonna do that. I don't know. That's a good thought. But you no, cannot I, reduce any of the special accounting treatment areas without a supermajority. Exactly. Period exactly. No. So yeah, no. it's still it's still not worded quite right. Yeah. But that, this is why I wanted to have the conversation with the folks. Because when you you know how it is, when you stare at this thing for long enough, you start looking right through things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good thoughts all. Anything else that you think I missed with any of this? If not, that's the last item on the agenda. And I appreciate everybody hanging in. Oh, we have a couple folks in the crowd, so... Yep, ma'am. Questions? Please. Um, when this document or whatever... Policy? Policies. Um, what's your target date for having this completed so villagers will have a chance to... I believe the see board's... See some daylight on it. I believe the board's desire is that at their meeting on the 6th of October, they will put the final version of this policy statement out for public commentary. That's and a week from now. It's a week from mm -hmm. Wednesday. Yeah, short fuse on this one. Yeah. And the, yeah. And the intent is that they will vote on it either at that meeting or shortly thereafter. I'm not exactly sure what their, what their plans are. Gary, do you Gary? know? We, we will probably have a special meeting immediately after that meeting <coughs> because uh, it, it, it's been everybody's goal. There just has been several things going on this summer and starting with the budget season. Uh, a lot of this work has just taken a lot of time, but it but the intent for of the board is for this to, policy. Uh, explanation, policy clarification, whatever we want to call it, to be adopted before the owners are uh, received the ballot that will be mailed out in October. So, if the board's going to 
see it next Wednesday. And then, traditionally, typically, you wait until the next upcoming board meeting to finalize or approve something. Are you saying you'd have a special meeting sooner than that? We to could. Put this we thing could. together so that so you won't really get much, if any, um, villager um, reaction or input. I well, mean, if you had a special meeting like that same afternoon, then villagers don't see it at all. This policy is the result of the board's desire to do away with all of the question, all of the criticism <coughs> boards have received. Now we're living with, I said this earlier in the spring, this room is, has a hangover. This room, past boards may have done things with the money, the budget that they did not, that uh, may have been different from what they had promised. And this board, the sitting board says, uh, has seen very clearly what needs to be done, and that's where money will be spent. Uh, the the future task, future funding uh, task force provided a lot of data. The board has absorbed that. The board has, as far as I can remember, it's been published. So this policy is um, an attempt by the board to. Uh, make it very hard for future boards to deviate from that plan. Because it that, I, and I understand all of that. I've been the one sitting in the chair at all of these meetings, so you're talking to someone that does try to stay informed and stay close to what's going on. And you're on. to be congratulated. You are in a minority. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Um, so at what point in this process, have have the um, attorneys given you any guidance on what, how how well, how tightly you can write this policy such that about the it's best not going to be as easy to change it by future boards. Without a uh, change to the uh, declaration. Uh, about all we can do is just is make it harder for future boards to make a change. In other I words, understand. the conversation you heard this afternoon about supermajority required to change these baseline items, uh, <coughs> that's about all we can do as a board. Understood. As a board. Uh, as I voters. In, I understood okay. some discussion that this would be vetted in some way by the attorneys kind of giving a blessing, if you will. Well, they've already looked at that. Guidance. That's what I'm asking. That's, that's, why, that's where so we got the idea. We've already gotten some um, yeah, the attorney, opinion. The attorneys already, the attorneys already the attorneys looked, at, looked at the supermajority, and, yeah. and this board can that, put that into place. Yeah, they, that's they've, that's asked, that's they've asked the question, can a supermajority be put into place? The answer is yes, a supermajority can be put into place by amending the bylaws. To allow a supermajority, because of the declaration limits, that's pretty much all the board has the ability to do, because the declaration doesn't provide them any other flexibility. So the attorney's recommendation on that was you have to be very, very careful. Anything that you're going to impose a supermajority on, you have to be very careful of, of to scope that work properly so that you don't unintentionally put yourself in a box. My concern is that villagers, I think, are looking for a policy in a, in a pretty simplistic way in the sense that, as I read the tea leaves out there, people feel as though it's got to be culvert streets, you know, public services, period, end of discussion. Now, from what I hear, a long list in your, in your write-up and such. Um, and that's, I think, it does need to have detail. But I, I'm concerned that too much detail then starts looking like, ah, oh, see, they're trying to work their way around, you know, 
the key three or four things that everybody seems to be the most focused on? Well, just, just, the, the, just the, an observation. The hard part of the work is is writing some a policy that does not lead to a secondary problem, and that <laughs> requires a lot of hours. Yes. That requires a lot of hours. Unintended consequences. And uh, the committee has been trying to come up with as few words as we can uh, to explain this. Is what you're developing here um, crossover from multiple different parts of the bylaws? In other words, I hear you talking about, well, Article 29 and Article 2. Are, no. are you talking about as contained in this one document? You have that many articles in this document? Or no, there will, be one, about there, there will be one very short change to the bylaws. And then in the policy documents, you're going to reference these uh, policy sections. The, the bylaw. So the bylaws. I can't remember exactly how many pages the bylaws are, but it's something like 15 or 20 pages. Mm -hmm. Then the, there will need to be a change to the bylaws to permit the board to establish a supermajority voting requirement on something that currently does not exist in the bylaws. So that's the first step that has to happen in a voting sequence. Then the policy statements, there's actually, right now, the reason we're talking about Article 29 in Chapter 1 is because there's already 28 articles in Chapter 1. I know. So yeah. the, 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 two, the two articles in question here appear to be some minor edits to Article 2, which is the current budget policy, and some of these are not necessarily related to the establishment of, of this areas of special accounting treatment, but it actually cleans up some legacy references that should have been cleaned up some time ago. Like there was a reference to the CFO and there was a reference to a three-year plan okay. and things like that. Okay. So, so there's so there's some cleanup in Article you're 2. You're ending up having to do more than just what the initial... Um, yeah. Correct. Yeah, there's a little yeah, cleanup so in Article yeah, 2 and then like Article 29 is a new It's multiple yeah. things to be yeah. mm -hmm. legal and everything referenced correctly. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a ton of fun. Uh, one other quick question. Um, because I'm the one that's always sitting here, you know, interested in what's going on. You referenced a couple of other upcoming meetings. Are those open to the public to attend? Yes. These meetings are always open. Yes. Because those don't get... Um, noticed in the Village Digest. How yeah. does any? How would anybody that doesn't come know that Wednesday you're going to meet again and mm -hmm. the fourth you're going to meet? Um, when are those meetings? Where? What time? Well, the meeting. The meetings are the same. Same bat time. Same bat channel. They're in this room. One. One p.m. Uh, we have two standing meetings a month. And then we, like the other committees, will add meetings as necessary to be able to, to get through the work that we mm -hmm. had to do. Because of the, the timeline on the budget review and because of the sheer size of the budget and the amount of line items that we had to go through, we put extra meetings on the calendar over the last couple of weeks to be able to... Your, to, your calendar, but yeah. again, as I say, it's those a good point. don't get it's a good noticed point. It's a good point. We should do, do better at getting those extra meetings added into the Village Digest. Mm -hmm. That would be great. If you That's a good point. Okay. Thanks. That's fair. That's Correct. what we got. And they may be on the website. I don't know if they're in the Village Digest, but oh, I think the that they get listed on the... a whole other story as far as looking. I mean... The calendar. The website will show committee members that haven't been on your committee for you know, a year. I mean, it's just, gotcha. it just so it's, doesn't get updated. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, and, there, and then there's some challenges being able to, these meetings are always recorded so they can be played back, but whether or not They're, the recording actually gets posted is another loose end that isn't always tied yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Sir, did you have any? Well, I'm here. I just I just want to make a comment. And uh, my name is Kelly Hale. I just retired six months ago and moved to the village here. Uh, 
I worked for UPS for 37 years, and you folks are very articulate, and I want to just compliment you all for the type of questions and the way you go about going through the budgets. I'm very familiar with budget management and getting ex things executed, and I think you're, at, you're right on point with a lot of the questions that you're asking and the focus that you have overall. Uh, because the environment I grew up at UPS was, you didn't have money, you don't spend it. And if you wanted something like a new computer, or you wanted your office painted, then go sell some more next air letters and bring the revenue in and figure out how to do it. And I think that's exactly what needs to go on here. Mm -hmm. And you folks are right on point. Um, and it's, it's very evident, listening to many of you, that you've got some background in uh, business or military or whatever it may be uh, that's going to be very helpful. And I just want to thank all of you. Uh, and when it comes to the realtors and builders, don't even get me started. They're making money hand over fist right now. This place sells itself. And I agree with the comment on the marketing. Yes, you do need to market it to continue the growth of what's going on because it's just a churn of people aging and then like myself recently retiring, uh, they'll be able to come here. But the place sells itself in a lot of ways. And I found out word of mouth. My mom's lived here for five years. And a lot of other people that I meet on the golf course, they're the same way. You know, they research it, but they found out word of mouth mm -hmm. of what's going on. And to give any concessions to these builders or these realtors, I, I would struggle with that mightily, you know, in a lot of ways. So I think you folks are doing a lot of good things uh, for even being the first time to come sit with you. I didn't want to throw rocks at you. I didn't want to tell you a nice story. <laughs> Appreciate what you're doing, okay? Right. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate it, sir. So, any closing commentary? If not, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Say it's